So, but yeah, Neil Neil accidentally ripped the cover right there. That's yeah, almost as secure as some of the DVDs I used to buy at Tower Records. I'm trying to get those out of those jewel boxes. Oh, the anti theft things. <laughs> yeah, which was so ridiculous. Yeah, no kidding. So, anyways, like, this arrived today, and I was excited, and uh -huh. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna open it on stream and, and be surprised. <laughs> yeah, no, that's pretty. Well, that's neat, you know, to see something arrive like that, you know, the uh, like you said, the the, the, the care and uh, the quality of the uh, uh, the case and everything. Wait, wait till wait. my 200 days or whatever it is is up, because there's a 200 something day waiting period. Um, oh yeah. Because uh, I didn't put exp I, this one. I went ahead and put expedite on because it was yeah. all by itself. Sure. Um, whereas the other ones, because everything gets done together, whether it's modern or Bronze Age or whatever. So uh -huh. I had a whole bunch of Bronze Age stuff done. Um, right. And, uh, but that was uh, also signed by Neil. And I was very fortunate to get those signed pretty much, uh, again, the, just uh, the week before he passed away. But, um, uh, so I was fortunate to get those signed. But he actually was nice enough to sign my, uh, 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 I've totally forgot and it was Nick who reminded me that because he was going through uh, Nick from uh, uh, Krusty Bunker in, in, in Burbank, uh, which is Neil Adams Krusty Bunker. It's actually uh, the store is actually called Neil Adams, um, but uh, uh, but that's Neil's store. And Nick is the guy who manages it for him. And Nick and Nick was going through my comics one day, and he's like, "Oh, you're gonna get all this stuff CGC certified." It's like, "Yeah, because I need to sell it and blah blah blah." And he uh -huh. was the one, because, again, we're trying to pay for renovations on the house. So it's like, yeah. get rid of some of my stuff. But he's like, you know, you have the first appearance of Dark Side in here. Oh, yeah. yeah. As, as well as, uh, uh, he's like, and Neil did the first, uh, did the first, or did the uh, the cover to, uh, uh, what was it? Tomb of Dracula number one. So uh -huh. uh, he got those certified, he got those all uh, CGC certified for me, so. Uh, so hopefully those will be really good ratings and I can get those uh, get those back and those I definitely had already planned on selling uh, this one was just I wasn't I did, was debating if I wanted to sell it but then when I got the Batman who laughs uh, I definitely would rather have that in my collection because I collect sure. art more than I collect comics personally um, as you guys know I collect original art <laughs> so uh, this is actually a uh, David Finch page uh, inked by Joe Weems Oh no way! And that's uh, awesome. Uh, this is from Cyberforce, but I have it because I like the way this duck down here was inked. Uh, notice something familiar? Yeah. So I'm actually using this as my style reference for how I'm doing some of the wall and shading effects and stuff on here. Oh, okay. So, All right. but yeah, so I'll use, how, I'll I'll study how somebody else did stuff, and oh. kind of apply that to my own work, and that's how you get better. So, going back to. Uh, uh, Fabiana, who was talking about doing the uh, uh, doing the life drawing stuff and practicing, yeah, it's it's practicing and it's studying other people's stuff. Right, so, right. hence why I have a big library of this. And let me put Spider Man here down, and then I'll come back and show you some other stuff. Rookie Wookie was saying, it's like uh, you know you need a shower when you have a crusty bunker. <laughs> Crusty Bunker does sound like code for like a medical condition. <laughs> How are you feeling? I'm feeling great, doctor, except that uh, I've got a crusty I, bunker. I got, got a little bit of a crusty bunker here. It's like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, no, I, I totally been there. Me Let's too. get some uh, lab work done on you, son. <laughs> but yeah, so I'll have, you know, so going back to, oops, let me put that aside. So these aren't originals, but this is an auction catalog. Um, but I marked off a couple things because I liked how the the scales on the creature here are done. This kind of weird crustacean worm thing. Uh, so these were actually drawn by Mark Schultz, and I just I loved how he did these these the crustacean scales here. So that's what we're probably gonna be working on today. Um, I'm not doing scales. I'm doing more of a tentacle, obviously. Uh, but I just, I loved the segmentation and how he, he inked it. So I'll be doing something similar. So not exactly, we're not going for the same look. I'm not trying to make this look like it has a hard carapace on it. But, uh, so that's, you know, again, I'll, you look through, you find stuff that kind of like, hey, that's that's kind of what I'm looking for. And then you go for it. And then you have a copy of Free Comic Book Day, Suicide Squad, King Shark. Just because you may want to read something. <laughs> Like literally, that fell out of my book. I was using it as a bookmark. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
And by the way, I also have another page here by Joe Weems. Please start falling too. There was there was a ball you bought. <laughs> What, what's up? So, what do you think this is King Shark Volume 2? Oh. There was a King Shark Volume 1? He, yeah, no he, he did have his own solo title before. <laughs> and so uh, I also had this one because I was looking at how he was inking some of the smoke effects and stuff uh -huh. uh, for the backgrounds and this, this battlefield back here and some of the debris. So I haven't decided if I'll use that as reference or not yet for this, but uh, for this background area that I penciled in with all the smoke and things. Uh but, you know, you never know. It's good to have it there just in case I need it. Of course, of course. Madala checks in. I am Groot. Hey, what's up, Madala? He says, no, I am Groot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am Grooticus. No, no, I am <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I am Groot. <laughs> I missed my date with Mandala yesterday because I had to go buy new uh, shoes. Uh -huh. So, nice shoes. But, um... <laughs> the, the, <laughs> the worst part is, is I wear an 11, 11 and a half, 6 E. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's um, not an easy task. So the only shoes I can find that are not custom made that I fit in are uh, New Balance. I can wear their 4 E's if they're a soft side. So if the if it's not like something that's really rigid right here on the side yes. here. Uh, so, yeah. So that's why I have. Uh, so anytime we go shopping, that's such a hard shoes to shoe size to find, anyways. So yes, it is. Uh, but yeah, I, so whenever we go shopping, it really is. <laughs> we kind of, you you get whatever you can. So it was literally my kids got the same problem I do, um, except right. he's not a six E. He's actually a four E. So so now there's competition for me to get shoes in my size. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, we'll actually go to the store and we'll just pick out a boatload of shoes. Whatever fits us uh, is really what we're limited by because they don't even make our size and all the styles. So yeah. So I did yeah. get some nice new dress shoes looking things. So. Oh, 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 hey, that's hey. But again, because uh, I have to get uh, custom-made shoes, New Balance, all black shoes are the closest I can get to like dress shoes. <laughs> Let's normalize wearing, you know, dressy sneakers, you know, offered to these events. Because sometimes, you know, it's like wearing dress shoes is one thing. But then also if you're having to wear dress shoes and then be on your feet all day, that's crazy work. Yeah, that's insane. My mom <laughs> used to wear these shoes, Saucony or something like that. She swore yeah. by them. Yeah. Uh, it was, uh, it's basically it's the same shoes nurses would wear. So. Yeah. No, oh, yeah. No, the nurses are great people. Great people to ask. You know, what kind of shoes are those? Where do I get them? Uh, obviously, uh, an industry uh, of people who are on their feet, working hard, working fast. Uh, uh, I, I have friends who you know work in construction and stuff. And while while they they are probably work, working you know just as hard and fast, they're kind of in a safety. Don't and you know so they're 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 always talking about steel tone stuff, which is great. But those are those those oh, just so terrible on your feet after a while. Yeah, um, those blue ones I picked up though. Those are not, those ones are really the, the ones I showed those first. Good. Those are comfortable. I'm wearing those right now. Yeah, yeah, my dog was. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we can, we can go 6E, and then, he, yes, 6E. Uh, Madal says, I got stood up in 102 degree weather. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry, Madala, were you just out there, you know, I could just, you know, instead of like in the rain, I, 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 I'm picturing like Constantine's, you know, the, the Keanu Reeves version of Constantine, version of hell when he goes there and <laughs> <laughs> destroyed the, the hell version of Los Angeles. There's demons and hot heat and sun. <laughs> or that one scene I also see in uh, 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 Chronicles of Riddick, or Riddick Part 2 or whatever, where that one guy actually goes out to the sun on that one planet and is like just slowly destroyed. Hmm. As each gust of hot wind comes by, at first, like, you know, it, it ignites him. Then it takes his skin off. Then it finally just turns his bones to cinder. It's like, oh, that was... That was definitely this weekend. <laughs> uh, Wookie Wookie goes, never heard of the 6E thing. Yeah, no, uh, they, it, it's... 
I, I similarly, I have wide feet, not uh, not as wide as uh, Lee's feet, but uh, yeah, like I, uh, it's it's really hard. I, I too am a big fan of New Balance as a good shoe. Uh, also, I can kind of uh, I also wear Pumas on on uh, Puma and Reebok occasionally. Adidas like, used to make shoes my size, but then they stopped. I, Adidas, yeah, I was just gonna say Adidas sometimes Nike not at all anymore. I cannot find anything. Oh my god. That like I, I have like a size ten foot. If I'm going to buy something like a Nike shoe, I need to. I've tried. I've done it just because I was bored and just frustrated. I have to. I had to wear like a size twelve Nike sneaker yep. to fit you know my foot, and it's like, well, this is ridiculous. I am like my my it's toes like are shoes. two inches away yeah. from the tip of this thing, and it's like that's no good. That's, yeah, absolutely. It's like it's like clown shoes. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly. when I was a little kid because my mom, you know, again we've mentioned this repeatedly on my own channel. I grew yeah. up dirt fucking poor, so yeah. we would shop at Payless, and that's where my mom would always get my shoes from, and uh, you know, or Kmart or someplace like that. And but it was funny because the uh, the you know the shoe sizes were so bad that as I yeah. when I became like a teenager or whatever, I remember at one point I was wearing size thirteen shoes. Sure. Just so the width of my foot fit in the damn thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, because they couldn't find anything, you know, in my, again, my foot's only 11 and a half, 12, you know, so. Right, right. Uh, you know, so to wear something that was that many sizes too large, you know, and my foot's 11 and a half, 12 now. When I was in the Marine Corps, all my, my combat boots were all custom made for me. Yep, yeah. No, you know, and that was it's, convenient it's because they charged me exactly what they charged everybody else for the boots. Yeah. So, because yeah. they had a, they had a whole system set up to custom make people's boots. I, I know. Boots I know people who have said that it's like, well, the one good thing about the military, it's, it's some of the best footwear I ever got. <laughs> yeah, I just I just got to get the stuff resold every once in a while. So yeah, I just yeah. keep the boots. But yeah. But Dal was saying, it says, yeah, I can only wear New Balance because of my camel like feet. <laughs> yeah, no, I feel you exactly. Hmm. I, you know, thank God New Balance is out there. You know, because I don't really have a lot of choices out there. And then, like, uh, my my dad was the first person who turned me out because, like, I don't know, my feet weren't always like this or whatever, or I could fit kind of like in a normal size shoes. And all, as I became more of a you know an adult, I'm like, okay, this is just gonna be weird. But my dad, for the longest time, uh, he used to order custom shoes from Red Wing. Uh, because one, he had wide feet, and then also his feet. No, 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 no. Like a lot of things on your body, you know, nothing is you know quite symmetrical. Your your dominant hand, your you know your dominant arm is slightly longer than your your, your other arm. Hands and feet in the same way, so your feet aren't quite the same size. But, but most of ours is like we can wear a size shoe, and you know, uh, the same size shoe, and it's kind of like okay. But like, yeah, my dad has like. He orders them like a half size different, you know, when, when he did order them. So, uh, and Red Wing was cool about that. You know, you didn't have to buy two pairs of shoes. Uh, and, uh, you know, you could just buy one size of one, you know, left on one size and right in the other. And that kind of worked. Uh, although I found out much to uh, uh, many frustrations. A friend of mine, uh, she has different size feet. And while, uh, you know, she can buy like sneakers and stuff, and again, more more of us do wear sneakers. Uh, she can't find nice like dress shoes or heels. As she, you know, it's like you know, sometimes you want to feel pretty, put on some heels. And she says it's very frustrating, and, and it's also very noticeable if you're wearing heels that one if one foot is you know the uh, shoe is uh, uh, bigger than the other. You know, because when it's all strappy and people can see your feet, and we can see that one is like clearly, you know, showing more toe and upper heel than the other one is, because you, obviously you're getting a shoe, you know, to fit the larger of the foot, foot up the smaller. And she says, yes, it's just, you know, that that that's her, that was her, you know, million dollar idea is to have an industry where, you know, they can uh, have uh, women's fancy shoes, but, you know, you can buy an individual size for each foot. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, Mondo says, Lee, do you also buy only Echo dress shoes? Uh, they are a good dress shoe brand that makes wide widths. Um, I've never even heard of those. Yeah, Echo. ECCO. That's another brand that my dad has, uh, has, uh, has approached. So here's something really f fun to show you guys really fast, though. So this is, of course, how a standard shoe is laced. Um, it's it's nice of them to stick the thing on there wide to remind me it's a wide shoe. But um, yes, 
Oh, I uh, like those too. Those are that's nice. So this is the uh, one. So like I said, we buy I buy shoes in bulk. I usually buy shoes once, and then I don't have to buy shoes for several years. Uh -huh. um, but uh, uh, and then I just wait till I wear them all down, and you know my last pair broke in the heat wave. So I was like, oh, gotta yeah. get another pair. But yeah. um, I'll keep those for garden work though. Uh, yes, but anyway, so this is the way you lace shoes. This is how everybody on earth laces shoes, except Terry Hiroyuki Tagawa. Yeah. <laughs> he laces shoes like this. <laughs> and uh -huh. You'll notice, I'm going to set this on the artwork because it's clean. Um, this one I'm wearing, so I'm not going to set it down. But, uh, but yeah, so it starts at the bottom. You skip. You lay, So you basically start here, skip to here, skip to here. Then you go back down go back down and that's where your knot is and his logic behind it was that and also you catch the tongue on the way back down um, but uh, his logic on that is that uh, this when you tie it all the pressure is right there well this is yeah. where all the arteries are in your foot all the veins and stuff come in at this top part here and so if you have all your pressure on this part here on your shoe it cuts off the circulation to your foot your foot doesn't quite get as much blood and oxygen to it it gets fatigued easily yeah. but if your pressure is down here because you laced way at the at the at the across the, the bridge of your shoe or the bridge of your foot as yeah. opposed to up at the ankle then the ankles open more and gets more blood flow and since i work all day you know i like to stand when i draw for the most part uh you know when i'm not injured uh <laughs> I, I draw standing up, as, you know, Fuji seen me do. but uh, And I'll stand up for 8, 9, 12 hours a day while I'm drawing um, or painting or something. So, uh, but yeah, this was something that uh, Kerry Tagawa taught me. So, uh, uh, yeah, so, <laughs> uh, what was it, uh, 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 what was his name character in, in, in uh, Mortal Kombat? Um, Sang Sang Sung. Sang Sung, yeah. yeah. So, Sang Sung taught me how to lace my shoes differently so <laughs> that's also how you can tell i've got a really new shoe is it's laced like that not like that yeah so the says the general advice is to lace not lace appropriate uh for your when your foot bends at the same time keeps your shoe seated properly without any effort when moving yes yes uh, i've heard that about too the whole physics of this uh and then my also was saying i'm gonna say it's like oh i think of the corn song when people say it <laughs> I didn't think about that until now. It's like, oh yeah, that's right. Corn did that song. Uh, as a as a as a kid, I didn't know there were any shoe stores that weren't Payless. Yeah, yeah Payless is good and bad. It works off of the. It's like, well, let's show, sell a lot of people a lot of cheap shoes. Foot Locker that, was where everybody went to get their Jordans, and I couldn't afford yeah, that. Uh, the foot Payless cheap shoes kind of like break down after six months, and you're you know flapping around with the heel falling off and everything or you duct tape it up like, you know, some of us did <laughs> until you could go back there next year. I don't know if they still make it, but there was this stuff called Shugu. Oh, yeah, I know. Shugu is still Basically, there. it would there. fuse your shoe together. So that's what yeah. we were using. I, I used to see guys whose shoe was mostly Shugu. <laughs> it's kind of neat. Uh, so Rookie Wookie goes, you guys have Hobbit feet. Yeah, no, I'm sure that's all the Hobbits were waiting for, you know, is just uh, for the shoe market to come around to them. Maybe that's what New Balance, maybe New Balance is actually founded by Hobbits. Who knows? That would you know? work. <laughs> I don't think they'd they object. They do in mysterious ways. Uh, so, uh, said we're just saying having the correct boot is clutch when you're in the service. Oh, yeah, of course. And, well, in, in anything, actually, you're, you know, uh, be, be kind to your feet. I've heard a lot of people say in a lot of different industries. And, so, hey, Steve, uh, we saw... Uh, uh, did you see go see Jaws in the theater, Fuji? I did not. Okay, I, we saw right. Bullet Train I, I this weekend. Did. So uh, we're going to be talking movies in a bit if you want to join us. Yes, please do. But go ahead. I just saw him in there, so I wanted to shout yeah. out. Keep going, Aaron. Baby Yoda goes. Shugu is amazing stuff. I have it in my purse. Yes, Baby Yoda. It, it, it is. It's it's good for a lot of things. It's good for things other than shoes. I mean, it is a really kind of cool uh, silicon. Uh, adhesive kind of thing, you know. And I use uh, it to recock my house. You, yeah, you could recock your house. You could fix your boat. You could turn your screen door to a boat. <laughs> I'm trying to remember what was that stuff they did. It was uh, I used um, oh the Flex Seal. Yeah. Yeah. Shoot, like I think like Flex Seal reminds me of uh, uh, of shooting. <laughs> yeah. 
female goes, let's go! <laughs> that's, that, 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 that's right. So if you, if, you have a, if you have Shugu, your person, a sharp knife, you'll probably survive the zombie apocalypse. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> My dog says, uh, so do you notice any subjective difference with the lacing versus the traditional? And also my dog was saying, because my arteries are all messed up because most people's footprints are Europe, are Europe while mine is Asia. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... Thank you very much for the follow, Kev. Well, keep keep in mind, Kerry Tagawa is Asian. Yes. In case you didn't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, uh... But yeah, so he, uh, uh, so you know, I don't, I don't know about the Asian foot versus the European foot. I have more of the European, technically, you know, Scandinavian Viking. So you know, that's, right. I'm, I'm built more like that. It's, um, it's good for boots and pillaging. Yes, <laughs> and um, uh, but yeah, you know, I make cobblers weep. But um, uh, but no, it was it was one of the things that uh, uh, I've discovered personally. Again. I don't like. I didn't get like an oxygen test in my in my toes while doing this or right. anything. But I find that I do get less fatigued uh, in my feet uh -huh. with my shoes laced this way. So, uh -huh. um, and you know, I, I, I also, by the way, I've had former assistants where I have actually when we would do like uh, the San Diego Fair and stuff. Um, I had one of them. She was constantly, you know. Uh, I don't want to say complaining, but I mean we were on our feet for a long, to long time, at the fair, walking around in the heat, and also at conventions, walking around, you know, on concrete floors and stuff. And she was complaining that her feet were really hurting, and she was wearing Converse, and so she's like, "I really want to sit down." And uh, oh yeah, Converse. Yeah. And I so, uh, or can't remember was it Converse or Vans, one of the two. But yeah. um, and so I was like, "Well, let me try something." So I relaced her shoes, and I explained why I was doing it, and. After that, every time she bought new shoes, literally, she would show up at my house just and hand me her new shoes. <laughs> Say, can you relace these for me? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, uh, so, you know, again, I, I never took like a blood test or something to figure out what my oxygenation level was. But it, uh -huh. it for me personally, it definitely feels uh, less fatigued lacing this way. And also, again, you know, she swore by it after that. So, right. <laughs> Lee Fabian is asking, uh, can you give us a two minute? Can you give us two minutes to grab our shoes into a live stream? Live stream of the lacing. You know what? Sure. <laughs> Let me move this. Okay. So I got. I got to relay some of the shoes. Um, nice. Also, while while Lee's setting up for this uh, impromptu uh, uh, shoe lacing uh, stream, uh, just <laughs> uh, one, one time I did look up uh, why are why why why, do, why are your shoelaces so long? When you get new, when you get new shoes, uh, and it's for a very very simple fact, uh, the the shoe companies the, uh, the shoe company is a, is a shoe lacing company, uh, so it's, they, they get buy, paid buy, by the inch. One size yes, one size shoe lace fits all for them, and so of course they just buy the longest one because and put it on all their shoes from their small size size shoe to the largest size shoe, uh, because. That's what works. So they only have to buy one thing. They only have to lay, you know, use one place. They they're not out there. It's like, oh, we're running out of small laces. We need for small laces. It's like we need for extra large laces. They don't want to have to do that. They, it's it, honestly the, the shoe the, the shoe company would just as soon have you buy your own laces if they could. Uh, so for a real treat, if you want, and I did this during uh, during the lockdown, and it really did make me feel better. Uh, you can go and buy new shoelaces online obviously in all sorts of colors and stuff and it's nice and it's just a real treat you know and it's a great way to just kind of like uh uh give a little bit new you know zip to your shoes and make you feel better even if you have no to go <laughs> so i'll lace the one and i'll leave the other one old school yeah. so you guys can see the difference between them madonna says fabian did you have to ask that algebra is a prerequisite for this <laughs> <laughs> when the car collector goes, I don't tie my tuck in the laces. Oh yeah, no, like I, I, a car collector. I was a big fan of like when uh, uh, Velcro, you know, basically laces came out for shoes. Like, oh, this is great. It's like you're just one step away from loafers, but still, this is cool. I like this. Uh, Kalversky, thank you very much for the sub. Thank Thanks, you, uh, Kalversky. 
uh, we'd much appreciate it. Uh, your support keeps the stream streaming. So we're gonna we're gonna take a quick break from the artwork, guys, to show you how uh, uh, how how Shang Tsung laces his shoes. Right. Exactly. So. <laughs> So anyways, so you've got your holes. The easiest way to remember it is start at the bottom where the bridge is, obviously, and then skip a hole. Right. Also pull your tongue up like that because this changes based on your shoe make and model. So you may you may lace, catch that the tongue loop on the way up. You may catch it on the way down. Looks like I'm going to catch it on the way up. And then just because I was in the military, I tend to actually do, uh, I usually tend to do a leftover right uh, and I keep it the same way, so. You'll also notice I twist my laces so that they are flat. Um, I don't know, I just, I hate it when they're like yeah, this no, that's, that, it, inside yeah, there. So it has, yeah, it has nothing to do with uh, efficiency, it's more to do with like, just on the lay flat. <laughs> yep. So you'll I'm notice, so I'll do it so that this lace, always when this lace goes over, it's always on the bottom. So it's just, uh -huh. but you don't have to do that. That's just, again, I was in the military and that was how we did things, <laughs> and and I, I happen to like that bit of order in it. Yeah. So See, I also that. I use that tongue loop. There's some people that says now the tongue loop is completely unnecessary. It's like that, that, I use somebody it. Somebody went to a lot of effort to do that. <laughs> well, I like it because like I don't un I really don't unlace my shoes. Um, yeah. I almost never untie them, because yeah. especially if it's way down here, I've got it snug enough that it stays on my foot while I'm running and things. But it's also loose enough that I can pull it off, and it doesn't like it doesn't fall off while I'm on the treadmill. But it doesn't. But I don't have to sit there and unlace it. So that's another reason why I like this way. So I put that over. And then you do that one. And so the key thing is, of course, once you've got this, it's pretty easy because you're, you know. With each level you lace up, you realize you're running out of holes. So, and you notice the one from the store, I, you know, they don't lace way up there. I don't need to because my foot's coming out here anyways. So this thing always hurts when I use it. So I don't need to use yeah, yeah, that. Yeah. If you need to use it, go ahead and grab it. But, yeah. you know, again, because I slip my foot in and out rather easily, uh, I don't need to worry about it. So That, that is for people, I'm told, who have a, uh, 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 a lower... Uh, it, it, uh, instep. Uh, okay. I have a very high one, so yeah, I don't use the, that uh, that that tippy top one. I wouldn't know, because <laughs> I have I have a high. Uh, well, I don't know instep. I have an arch, but. but anyways, and then it, this is actually the point where it confuses people. I don't know why, because it seems like you've only got two holes left, right? right. Um, on each yeah. side. And we're trying to use all the holes. Yep. You know? So, but yeah, same thing. Just keep going down. And that's all it is. It's just like lacing the other one, your normal shoe, except you skip two so that you can get the lace back down to the bottom. And there's your lacing. All nice and pretty. And then you just tie your shoe like you would normally tie your shoe. Now, once my foot's in there, obviously, you know, you actually can do the whole thing where you, you pull and flex and get it to, to hold. And then I, you know, I, I'll still like lace and unlace my shoe occasionally, you know, because, uh, you know, it's fabric. It's going to stretch over time, so it may loosen up a bit. Um, so, yeah, if I ever do catch it, it's getting too loose and it's going to slide off while I'm on a treadmill or something. That's my gauge, by the way. If my shoe goes flying while I'm on the treadmill, it's time to relace it. Um, so, uh, uh, but yeah, just kind of. Ta da there you go. And now again, all the pressure, when you tighten it and you cinch it down really good, is actually way down here. And so you're not pinching up at the ankle. And uh, I get far less foot, foot fatigue this way. So, but anyways, ta da there you go. That's Sapporos, thank you. <laughs> the flatter winder. Why winder wider and more colorful your laces the prettier the yes, bow yeah. <laughs> as, as opposed to the factory you know installed right exactly bow, right also uh anecdotally uh the flatter you know prettier your laces are the more handsome more successful richer you are uh also i'm told that it's a uh 
uh, resistance against uh, fire, acid, and uh, force saving throws, and uh, will also give you uh, plus two to initiative. Oh, that's these shoes. <laughs> so I did not realize this until I bought this. So those dress, <laughs> those those ones I picked up as dress shoes or whatever. Uh huh. They actually have, like, they have like they're the New Balance Industrial, which I didn't realize <laughs> that. Right. Um, so which means maybe I'll wear them to a goth club. Um, yeah, that's, that's good. Yeah. But yeah, they have this little logo down here. So it's like they have their industrial brands are uh, steel. These are not steel toed, but they also have the anti slip and anti electrical. So non conductive oh. shoes right. as well. So if you want to get struck by lightning, wear these. Right. <laughs> Madala says, I've seen a lacy procedure where someone used a set of two laces so that two zones can be tightened independently. Huh. Yeah, no, I really just think that we should go to the Back to the Future, you know, shoes where they, you know, snug up independent, you know, automatically. I think that was probably the best idea. Uh, I'm told that they're out there, that Nike designed something like that and uh, with, with, with modest success like that. Uh, car counter. I tell my daughter there is no R support to Converse. Yeah, actually, I learned that too. Uh, Converse, uh, you know, very, you know, it's 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 very, you know, uh, uh, a stylish thing. But like, I for for I, I don't get it. <laughs> it's like how, how skateboarders can do all those tricks in in Vans and Converse shoes because there is no R support that damn thing. I might as well be walking on the floor. In fact, I think it's like just just. Trolling my feet because my feet are thinking, oh, hey, we've got shoes on. We could, you know, we're going to go walk for days. And it's like, nah. <laughs> it's, it's awful. It's like, what do, like you use for, what do you use for insoles in Converse? It's like more flooring. Yeah, exactly. No, it's like wearing, it's like wearing a, a Denny's pancake on the bottom of your foot, you know, uh, for, for, for uh, walking protection. Uh, Supermodels goes Velcro for everyone. That's that's right. <laughs> Problem solved. Art support. Art support messes right with my feet. Uh, flat bottom gang. Yeah. No, I, uh, I I have stopped wearing flat uh, flip flops, which you know, it's like I, I'm Asian. It's a traditional thing, and uh, but I I have opted to get uh, some you know those very. You, you wonder, it's like, who is out there wearing, you know, buying those $100 Tiva, you know, essentially sandals? It's like, me. I, I'm, I'm that guy, apparently. You know, because it actually has, like, arch support and uh, a good sole on it and, you know, secure strapping and everything. It, when, it, when it lacks in convenience, it makes up for in that it saves my feet. So you, what you're saying is uh, you single-handedly keep them in business. I, I think me, me and like five other people. Yeah, <laughs> the only ones out there wearing, uh, wearing them. So I'm cleaning up some of the areas that I've got some uh, rougher lining than I want. So the benefit of doing just black and just white is uh, I don't have to be as cautious with this as I would with something like if I'm doing the grayscale inking. Right. Oh my god, I have to be so freaking precise. Because if I'm not, uh, I have to, uh, uh, I can't erase, you know. And you, you've got to nail every shot. <laughs> right. right. Says, uh, I had some shoes that absolutely killed my feet, so I switched to flat bottoms. Never went back. Oh, right. I just dropped a pen. Uh, Lee, you saw Jaws at which location? IMAX in uh, uh, Plaza Bonita. Plaza Bonita, yeah. Uh, a friend of mine, he went and saw it uh, in Mission Valley. So I wished I had seen it at IMAX in uh, Irvine. The Irvine Spectrum oh, really? IMAX. That is su that's my favorite IMAX theater. It's uh -huh. freaking huge. Is it? Yeah. yeah. So if you want to see you know, something where it like encompasses your f entire field of vision. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, I, I didn't even bother to, to look when you, when you told me that uh, you're going to go see Jaws and, and, uh, down there. It's like, oh, that's wonderful. It's like, I thought about it. It's like, nah, but like, yeah, my friend, uh, another friend of mine saw, uh, saw it with uh, the IMAX in Mission Valley. Said, oh, it's like, you know, and he says, yeah, no, again, same thing. Never, never, never seen it on the big screen. Always seen it on TV. Yep. And uh, he says, yeah, it was, it was it's. It's 
it it it, it holds up okay. I mean, with the, yeah, even the, the it, there, there's you know, if if you know, you know, it's it's like it's like oh yeah, no, that's a mechanical shark. You know, <laughs> sorry to spoil it for you folks. They, they didn't actually get a, 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 they didn't train a real shark. This is not the live action, li you know, Lion King version of Jaws. And they didn't redo the special effects, so. Um, but he still says, like, that guy is clearly drunk. <laughs> That's not method acting. That guy is clearly sloth. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Fabiana says, so, I just walked around with the normal lace and this new lacing. Difference between night and day. You, sir, are getting the same stuff <laughs> on the 20th one for news. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> My camera's straight up and down, so if I do this, it just looks like I'm making a weird fist. But, yes, that's, <laughs> yeah, exactly. that's me giving you thumbs up. I'm glad yeah. you enjoyed the lacing. Well, welcome to my art stream where we teach you how to tie your shoes. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> if, we've done, if we've done nothing else... <laughs> But, uh, uh, but yeah, so Jaws, uh, I, I loved it, honestly. Um, it was really cool to see it on the big screen because, again, I, you know, I, it came out. Shit, was I even born when it came out? I think I was. Um, but obviously, I wasn't old enough to go watch an R rated movie. So, um, although, according to my wife, uh, in Mexico, they didn't care. So, <laughs> it's like. <laughs> A three-year-old? Yeah, let her in. <laughs> she can watch Jaws. Um, and that was re what's really funny, though, is when our kid was like three years old. Um, I remember we lived in an apartment uh, uh, about a mile from here, actually. And I was working really late in the studio. And my studio and the living room were basically part of the same room. The, the living room was just so fucking huge. I just took over a chunk of it as my art studio back then. And so I was sitting there working all night long. Maria went to bed. Uh, she has to get up at like 5 a.m. or whatever. And I guess like uh, on Friday night, she was just burned out and tired. So she's like, you know what? I'm going to go watch movies in the, in, you know, with our kid uh, in our bedroom. And so she fell asleep watching the sci-fi channel on a Jaws marathon. And so they were watching all the Jaws movies and probably, you know, Deep Blue or something, whatever that movie is that uh, Sam Jackson gives that great speech and then dies seconds later. Um, but, uh, uh, but yeah, it, it was kind of funny that uh, I woke up the next morning to our kid crawling on the floor. Like he's on his hands and knees and he's got his hand like this above his head. Right, and I keep hearing, and I hear this tiny voice, nan nan, nan 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 nan, and then he jumps up all of a sudden. I'm I'm crashed out on on the on the couch, or I can't remember if I was on the couch or on a futon, but I was on one of the one of the long furnitures that almost fit me, and because I'm a big dude, and it was just it was fine. All of a sudden, he's just coming up. He's like, I'm a shark. <laughs> and I discovered it's like where the hell did you hear that theme and he's all like mom was watching the movie last night and I'm just like you let him watch Jaws and he's like three of them and she's like no I didn't to this day she swears to God she did not let him watch Jaws right and it's all like he's three he hasn't learned how to lie yet right, yeah. <laughs> very, very, very uh, Fabiana says uh, my first IMAX 3D was in San Jose California when I was 13 it was night Time cityscapes and moonscapes thing that was cool as hell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, what the uh, IMAX is, is amazing. Uh, but uh, I, I remember uh, we, we actually studied Jaws in film class because it's such a classic. And, you know, it's like, what, what is a lot of classics you know, like and everything? But, uh, part of it was they covered uh, the music, which you just mentioned there, which, which is so iconic, you know, to this day. Uh, they use the Jaws music soundtrack actually to the intro, to, as the intro music to the movie Airplane! Exclamation point. <laughs> which I think is also fantastic. Oh, yeah, cause uh, I forgot about that scene where the, the yeah, tail fins. Yeah, the tail of the jet going around the clouds like a shark fin. Uh, uh, Everodian checks and says, hey there, I saw Jaws 3D in 3D a long time ago. 
<laughs> yeah, no, I can only imagine it's it's uh, what that must be like being Jaws 3D. Well, that was yeah. Jaws 3D though. That wasn't watching. That was Jaws 3 basically. Yes. They they released it in 3D as a gimmick, yes. and I was just yeah. all I I I think I saw it in the theater maybe because it I don't know. Is that the one? Uh, is Jaws 3D? No, I'm thinking of Jaws 4. I think that's the one with uh, what's his face in it. And, uh, yeah. No. Um, yeah, no, it got a little crazy when it's just like suddenly now there's this family of sharks that are out for right. revenge. Right, right, yeah, exactly. No, it's like they're learning. Uh, which, which, by the way, folks, that reminds me, uh, Parada uh, is available on uh, Netflix right now. Go, go see it. Just Christopher Lloyd, one of his best roles. <laughs> well, what's funny is Piranha was actually the movie that um, James Cameron was working on that he got fired from. Right. Uh, and it was because he got fired from that for because, you know, he was doing all the the, the Corbin movies and right, right. Uh, so do all these you know low budget special effects sci fi films, and so yeah. he started working on uh, Piranha, and I guess the director of Piranha didn't like having you know this young kid kind of a hotshot telling him how to do his job, and so he fired. Uh, Jane or the producer or somebody didn't like having you know they were just oh you know this, just a know-it-all fucker so they fired right, him. right yeah exactly no. and then he went off and made one of the highest grossing movies of all time so it's, that's yeah, when you're yeah, kind of yeah. and your movie tanks at the theaters that's when you're kind of like maybe we should have listened to him yeah um, <laughs> the, 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 uh, specifically I just wanted to clear up because there were different the one that uh, Lee is talking about was actually the original Piranha that came in came out in the seventies uh, the one that I'm talking about is a I don't know if it's a remake because uh, <laughs> it just doesn't make any reference to the other one yeah. but it's just uh it, it's the 1990 uh yeah it's bd it came out in 2010 <laughs> oh yeah but it's not it's on netflix so it's not to be deep but yeah <laughs> it's still product. this one has an ensemble cast uh <laughs> uh Richard Dreyfus, he does make a he makes a little uh, cameo in it. Christopher Lloyd is in it. Elizabeth Shue, Adam Scott, all these people who again uh, uh, don't take the Piranha seriously, and they should have. Uh, it's like it's basically like Piranha Spring Break. It's awesome. Uh, uh, Kelly uh, Riley Steele, Ben Rains, and Eli Roth is in it. It's fantastic. As the Abomination? <laughs> oh no, it's Tim Roth. Sorry, that's Tim Roth. Different Roth. Wrong Roth. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, a, ca a cast of characters, and, uh, I, 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 I love it so, because I've actually been to the, the, the fictitious location that's supposed to be at, it's like, yeah, now these people can start to die. That kind of reminds me <laughs> of the, uh, uh, we were talking, uh, last week, um, uh, about She-Hulk. Yes. Uh, like, uh, uh. Because Wong had to, uh, he basically broke or uh, broke Abomination out of jail. I'm trying to remember, yeah, was, that, was yeah. that episode two or episode three? That was episode three. He explains why. Okay, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I get. Oh, wait, that's later today. We haven't talked about that yet. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll wait. <laughs> we'll, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll wait about. But we will. We will circle back to She Hulk. For those of you who have a She Hulk, you've got about uh, two hours to go watch it. So catch up. <laughs> it's, uh, it's only it's only a thirty minute show. So. Yeah, exactly. Put it, put it. Yeah, it's only thirty minutes. Put it on the background. Uh, well, there's a lot to unpack there. I, I love it. It's an awesome uh, show. If, 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 if nothing else, we now have a major pop star as part of the MCU. Uh, for, for you know, spo spoilers uh, incoming. Uh, I, I was, uh, uh, I, I find it interesting though, because like we were talking about, like the the special effects of Jaws on IMAX yes. and stuff like that. So you know, again, clearly you can see. Um, <laughs> The the only complaint I have heard people bitching about from She Hulk is the uncanny valley. Yeah. Of Green Hulk, and I'm like, it's a television show. Fucking it, give it exactly. a rest. Just get over it. It's like either cross, either cross the uncanny valley, or you know, yeah, just don't watch. I don't want to hear your I don't want to hear your bitching. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, it is clearly CG. It's also clearly done on a TV budget, so they didn't have a chance to smooth out everything. Although like, they got Hulk, they did Hulk rather well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But, like, yes, there are some scenes when She-Hulk is walking alongside normal, you know, quote-unquote humans, it looks weird, you know. But 
whatever. It's I'm 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 glad that they do it at all, and one that they haven't used any slow motion yet. <laughs> Rick Baby Auto continues with the thing and killer clowns from outer space were my childhood favorite horror movies. Yeah. Uh, we were stationed overseas, so everything we got was 10 to 15 years later. But yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, no. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, he loved, uh, like, the thing. And then they also, he was in Germany. Uh, and the first time he saw Big Trouble Little China is, like, when uh, the base, the, it, like, again, this entire base in Germany. Uh, they got like this big box of VHS cassettes <laughs> from America, you know, and they're just like, oh yeah, they just start, you know, you just went in there and you just like pull it out, you know, you just, you basically just grabbed as many as you could and you ran. He was like seven years old, so he grabbed up an armful of it and like his brother did too, and they just went back to their place. You know, it's like, what you get? It's like, they don't even know. <laughs> so they start going through it. But one of the movies that they have, they got was The Thing. And then, like, uh, literally, he said it was sticking next to it, like, with, like, uh, gum or sap or something else sticky. What the hell you know, they pack uh, it with? Bazooka? It was, it was uh, no, he said it was more gel-like. And, um, but uh, what was, uh, the thi- was the thing? So they got, they watched the double feature of Kurt Russell <laughs> doing... Uh, you know, uh, Big Trouble, Little China, and The Thing. And he says, this is, you know, they just thought, you know, what is the same actor? <laughs> and it's two, two preposterous situations. <laughs> and he says, it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> this is a Pork Chop Express. Yeah, yeah this is the Pork Chop Express. When you're on a dark and story night. <laughs> uh, but Dawson, says, the special effects of every season of Doctor Who always take me out of the illusion. It's like you're rumbling to it not speak. Oh yeah, no, I think the BBC really kind of embraced it. Uh, I mean, obviously, I mean, it, 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 you know, for, for those who don't know, uh, the reason why the, you know, Doctor Who goes around in a TARDIS is a bit of a joke, but it's also a bit, a bit about the budget. He says they had one. They had a police box that they had in props that they could use. And it's like, rather than actually, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, it's this big fourth dimensional thingy, whatever, whatever, you know, what, you know, it's it's like, oh, yeah, no, we're just going to use the police box. We're going to use this gag. Just say it's know, bigger on the inside. Every yeah, episode. It's bigger on the inside. And it has a chameleon circuit, but it's broken. You know, that's the explanation for it. You know, very similar. It's like, hey, you know, you do these things like Gene Roddenberry. uh the whole idea of the transporter. Thing. Oh, yeah. Something that, they, that he came up with like three months before they were supposed to shoot because he says, yeah, I need a budget to you know have a shuttle craft so they because they got to go up from the, the, the big ship to the surface. It's like, yeah, no, we're not going to do that every, you know, it's like that's going to cost way too much. You know, you're already over budget. We can't do it. So just, you know, figure out something. It's like, you know, and it's just, why, why do we have to show them landing anyway? Why can't we just, you know, just show them on the ground there? So, well, you know. And so, yeah, they came up with this, like, you know, well, they teleport there. It's like, okay, well, what that, what, do, what, what does that look like? They, uh, the stories I've heard is that they literally talked about this and they came up with this idea over a weekend of, like, what the transporter beam would kind of be looking like. They talked to some of their special effects guys. It's like, yeah, well, we could do this, you know, shimmery thing and blah, blah, blah. It's we like, can okay, put well, glitter in water and film it while you spin it. That'll work. Yeah, exactly. And then they came up with that cool noise, which I still think is a really cool noise. <laughs> to this day, though, I always learned, it's like, why is the transporter on Star Trek? Why do you have to keep it, you know, manually... You know, pushing those three levers, the, you know, those three sliders at the same time. It's like, one, why don't you just have it on one lever? Or two, what? <laughs> there is why a great comic Wait. book uh-huh. uh, called Chief O'Brien. I think it's called Chief uh-huh. O'Brien at Work. Uh-huh. Um, or Miles O'Brien at Work. And it is uh-huh. literally, yeah, I, pay, I supported the Kickstarter for it. I, sh- I should go uh-huh. dig this up one of these days. It's in my office. But it, it's a giant, oversized book. And uh-huh. it is basically every day O'Brien standing at the teleporter. <laughs> it's pretty much the exact same thing. Him standing there, him standing there, him standing there. And yes. then, like, over the PA system, you hear something like, you know, 
uh, you'll hear something like, you know, the ship's under attack, you know, red alert, da da da. It's like all this other stuff, and he's just sitting there in the room, and you hear the the the, the computer system and over the comm system, you hear all this stuff going out. It's like, you know, the Klingons are they've almost got. It's like, okay, all clear, we're good, and he's just in the teleporter room the entire time, <laughs> like, nothing happened. Or, yeah. or like he'll be standing there, and all of a sudden Riker will run past him, get up on the teleporter, and go, "Computer, beam me to the planet's surface." <laughs> and the computer would beam him down. And O'Brien, yeah, like, oh, O'Brien's like, "God damn it!" <laughs> like I, I, yeah. I wanted to push the button. Right. Yeah. Another person who's been on his feet all day too. You know, he's he, he doesn't. There's no chair in the transporter room. Yeah. Uh, but Cole Meany, that uh, I guess uh, more more tangents. Uh, he is in, like, the very first episode of Star Trek. He is in the counter of Farpoint of Star Trek The Next Generation. Yep. Uh, his character isn't given a name till like, the second season. <laughs> yep. He's refer- 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 referred to by rank. And again, he changes from... He's originally in a red uniform, and then he's uh, given the gold uniform. And, yeah, they don't actually, like, start fully develop. You know, and he talks about it. He's like, yeah, I know. I was just happy to be there the one day. And, you know, this, uh, this folks is also a prime example of what it means to just show up, you know, <laughs> but because he showed up, he didn't cause any problems. He was, he was, he was a joy to work with. They asked him back and they just kept on giving him like nonsense roles, you know, where he didn't have to do much and everything like that, you know, just need to stay there, you know, and, you know, hit, you know, hit, hit the button while uh, the, you know, the main cast walks by. But he just kept on doing that season after season. And it's like, oh, yeah, you know, it's, it's very much like a... Go get Cole like Meany. He's really good at pushing kind of buttons. Like, good job, Cole Meany. You, you know, we might have to fire you tomorrow, but, you know, good job. You know, and he just kept on, you know, and, you know, he, he lands up being there for seven seasons, going on to do DS9. <laughs> and, you know, amazing character. And uh, in DS9, it becomes a major I think, character. I think, I think I've talked to Lee about it. It's like, what is actually a chief petty officer, and how does that work? Because that's, uh, that, that's what he is. He's, uh, you know, he's not going to move up in rank or whatever, but, yeah, he is. And he's, he's also seen a lot. He, uh, you know, experience-wise, he probably has more experience than most of the uh, other uh, uh, officers on Enterprise. Most of the time, uh, that's what happens when you're a petty officer. Is uh-huh. uh, you know because uh, so in the Marine Corps we had what's called the non-commissioned officer. Um, uh-huh. That's basically what a petty officer is. It's a non-commissioned yeah. officer, and it means exactly that's why they that. Chief. That's you're why you're, you're an officer. Right. You know yeah. you're you're not a officer in the sense that you have a you know uh, you have ultimate authority regardless of rank because officers have you know that ability. A lieutenant with six right. months in can walk up to a sergeant major with thirty years in and tell him what to do. Yes. Um, now keep in mind, most of the lieutenants with six months in also nicknamed butter bars because they wear gold little, it's literally a gold rectangle is their thing. So it looks like a stick of butter. Um, so they'll actually, they're usually, you know, smart enough, usually, because I have seen a few that were stupid to actually realize that that Sergeant Major's there to advise you and tell you what to do and tell you what you should do as opposed to you bossing him around. Yeah. Yeah. He's a consigliere. Yeah, so a good <laughs> example, gonna, Battle Los he's Angeles. He's going to leave this group, but he can tell you, no, no, you don't want to do that. He's, so, he's, he's, he's mentor. Good he's example is uh, good example is actually go and watch uh, Battle Los Angeles. Battle Los Angeles. When you right. see that's, that's you know the right. staff sergeant talking to the lieutenant, the lieutenant's kind of fresh out of, of combat school. Oh, yeah, um, he's never right, fought yeah. anywhere, and whereas the staff sergeant's been in multiple tours in Iraq and Afghanistan or yeah. whatnot. Yeah. And... Uh, you know, so he just basically says, it's like, you know, and this isn't your unit, but you're just here filling in because our non-commissioned officers and our staff and NCO is not here. Yep. You know, and he's like, hey, we're, it's your it's your platoon, Lieutenant. You you make yeah. the calls. I'm just yeah. there to, to lead the men, you know. And, and, so, and then, yeah, exactly. And it's also, you know, when, again, I was Battle of Los Angeles still. It's a great movie. It's on Netflix, like, well, I highly recommend you guys watch it. It's I, I talked to Lee, like, Every time I watch that movie, I have questions for Lee. It's like, is this how it works in the military? Is this the chain of command? But there's so many weird things. But yeah, like, also, when they first do it, and it's like, it's supposed, it's just like all the other military movies. It's supposed to be a routine exercise. It's supposed to be not that big a deal. In fact, they think it's a drill, and then it turns out to be uh, an alien invasion. <laughs> oh, shit, you know? And it's like, no one has rules for this. No one has done 
So one of the things I really oh. like about Battle Los Angeles is it is probably one of, if, I think it's the most realistic depiction of how an alien invasion would be responded to by the military, by the U.S. military sure. anyway. So yeah. I, I always love that aspect. Um, again, I hate the thing where they're like, they're here for our water. And it's yeah, just... That was, yeah, that MacGuffin was kind of... I, crazy, I hate yeah. that excuse for why aliens are attacking. Uh, anybody right. who's watched this channel for a while know that that's one of my big pet peeves. Right. Um, I like science. And the, the number one thing that always occurs to me is, you know, uh, God, what was it? V fucking, you know, even uh, Independence Day, you know. Uh, yes. And all the other, but basically, it's like you know, yeah, they they travel from planet to planet, sucking it of its water, of all its resources, right. things like that. Yeah. And you know, they're after our molten core. Um, <laughs> it's it's. I hate to break the news to you, but there's other planets out there that are easier to get to, right. um, that you don't have to fight an established population to get to its molten core. Right. And if you can travel millions of light years. Uh, right. You know, outside of your own solar system into other, you know, into other solar systems in the galaxy or even possibly jump out of the galaxy into another galaxy. Then yeah. chances are you also have the technology to melt you've an already, ice cube. You're right. You probably you should. It's like you should have already <laughs> solved this problem. <laughs> so the idea that somebody's going to fly billions of light years or millions of light years or something to steal liquid water when uh -huh. chances are the Oort cloud has. Right. A hundred trillion times more water in it, frozen. You you you, you, you must just have baffles the asteroid me. Belt. The asteroid belt also has lots of water. You you probably passed through like you know Pluto, Neptune, like a lot of things. It's like so the, they have this uh, they have this ability to travel vast distances in space, but uh -huh. they can't melt an ice cube. <laughs> and that's the part that pisses me off. So it's just. Right. No, I, I completely agree. It's like, that's that. lazy writing. Yeah, yeah, the, science, the science maintains that, like, hydro, you know, you look at the periodic table, hydrogen and oxygen have single digit numbers. They are fairly common They're in everywhere. the universe. <laughs> you, you, you can find these things. I did kind of like, though, in Cowboys vs. Aliens, where they go, yeah, gold. Gold is hard to find. It's like, oh, okay, yeah, no, I get it. <laughs> Yeah, no. <laughs> rather, you know, it's like, yeah, no, they're they're here for the same reason you are. They 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 want gold, and you know, rather than, and they're they're basically claim jumpers. Rather than scour the universe for gold, they found a planet that's already mining gold. It's like, okay, let's kill them and take it. It's like, yeah, okay, I'm I'm down with this plot plot idea. It, it had a lot of other problems, but yeah, no, I, I thought that was a fine idea for why aliens are invading the old west. It was definitely I, I I still think it's stupid because you know if you again the science is there's there's actually one asteroid out there uh -huh. that they've already like done a spectral analysis on that shows that it alone has more gold than all of Earth has ever right. ever dug up. Yeah. Um, than we've ever discovered on Earth. So the idea that they would pass that asteroid to come here and, again, right. have to fight a bunch of rednecks on horses. Um, <laughs> How embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, it's like... <laughs> it's, it's like it's like being... It's, it's like like it's like the you know it, it, again it's it, it's like an army of pl platoon being taken down by you know, you know Chip and Dale, which I guess happens. <laughs> Chip and Dale are pretty resourceful as far as chipmunks go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, hey man, no plot hole. No, no, no. Yeah, it, it's yeah. No, again, we, we can't uh, look, we we can't look too deeply into the point. Madala says, Battleship was probably the most realistic way to depict the dimension where Rihanna is the Navy fight <laughs> is in the Navy fighting ants. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes. laughs> I forgot or about the why these <laughs> alien ships have to kind of like leapfrog around or, the Pacific. Or why or why the aliens were using you know missiles that were non-aerodynamic and shaped like little plastic plugs. It's like, oh, so we have something that ties into the game. <laughs> From we don't dock it so much, though, because, you know, on the off chance that, you know, Hazard does approach you, it's like, hey, we've got this idea of chain, you know, of, of, of turning the game sorry into a movie. What do you think? <laughs> yeah. See, the game Clue turned that into a movie because it had great, well, it had a plot line. Well, no, there is a Clue movie, and it's hilarious. Yeah, well, that's yeah, I love that but that's it. It's you know that's why it worked. Yeah, you know, um, 
sorry turning that into a movie. I can't think about <laughs> Shoots and Ladders. I think that's Parker Brothers, but still, you see what I'm saying here. Hey, yeah. Ha- Hasbro, obviously, now, uh, uh, Hasbro does it right. Uh, they, I mean, they do own uh, Transformers and G.I. Joe, which has made them a lot of money. They're, they're, they're doing okay. But yeah, ba- Battleship. <laughs> I do not Battleship up but I, I watch that you know, infrequently and when, when it comes on and, like, yeah, it's just... I avoid um, that movie. I saw it every, once and it was every, all like, that didn't stick. Is, everybody is, is is terrible at that except for Liam Neeson, and even then he's just phoned it in. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't watch that movie. I watched it once and I was all like, wow, right. not since Ishtar have I wanted that time back. <laughs> But uh, uh, now, great. Oh, so to- was in the broom closet with Miss Scarlet. Oh yeah, no. So I liked, uh, but yeah. So well, Saturday was like movie night or movie day. Yes. Yeah. So uh, we pretty much we went and saw Thor Ragnar or Thor Ragnarok. We saw Thor: Love and Thunder again. Uh huh. Um, because uh, uh, the first time we went, it was just kind of like Maria and I were like, "Hey, we need to go run a bunch of errands. We're gonna do this, that, and the other thing." Right. And then we're we're gonna go to the mall and just hang out for a little bit. And we asked our kid, it's like you know, we asked you know Saga, it's like, hey, do you want to come hang out with us? And he's like, nah, you know, teenager. Sure, sure. So yeah. <laughs> he's like, I'm gonna sit here and wallow. Yeah. And uh, so I was like, okay, whatever. So we took off and we ended up watching um, <clears throat> uh, Thor. And what was the other movie we saw? We saw like two movies that day. <laughs> oh, and Maverick. So we saw. Oh, uh, okay, good. Yeah. So we saw Love and Thunder and Maverick in theaters. So. Uh-huh. Um, and then this Saturday, it was kind of like, it's like, hey, we're going to do that again and just spend the day in the theater in the right. air conditioning. Um, yes, because it's 100 degrees outside, so let's uh, let's get out of here. Speak for yourself. But yeah, uh, but yeah we uh, uh, so we went and we hung out at the theaters all day long, and it was freaking awesome. Uh, but yeah, we went to what? We saw uh, Love and Thunder again, because again, he hadn't seen it yet, so he wanted to watch it. Yeah. And then... Uh, uh, Tried to get him to watch Maverick. He's like, nah. Oh, okay. all right. <laughs> like, Sucks to be you. Um, yeah, yeah. But uh, and then also we saw uh, uh, Bullet Train. Bullet Train. Oh yeah, we're oh, gonna talk a little God. bit about Bullet Train here in a minute. But, oh, I, so, I love that movie. I didn't. I I I told Lee. I got because he mentioned it. They go, that's right. I haven't seen Bullet Train. I'll go see Bullet Train. He gave me the idea. You know, I was gonna go see the, to the movies. I didn't know he went to watch. Said, yeah, Bullet Train. I heard some things about that like afterwards like i didn't know that i needed to see this movie because it's fucking awesome <laughs> well it's 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 that movie is such there's a there's a concept in film called uh orange stellar storytelling film whatever but it's called Chekhov's rifle and yeah. the idea is nothing is shown that isn't important so yeah, if yeah, if, exactly. if something Everything is yeah. is something is on that set if something is there it has a purpose it has a reason for being there and right. it was funny, like I. That's why I started laughing so hard about the bottle of water. Yeah, you know. Now, there's uh, so many elements. If you haven't seen it, you guys need to see it. We won't give too much away, but yeah, great show. So, but uh, 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 yeah, I, I want to get into that a little bit because I, I loved. You know, they would do this thing where every time a major new character appeared on screen, they would get a title card. Yes. So you would see their name appear, and it'll be this dramatic kind of like zoom in, like you know, <laughs> Ladybug, yeah. you know, yeah, the Ladybug. twins, or like the assassin, the <laughs> yeah. old guy, the, the old guy, you know, yeah. and that, that, because like they realize it's like that their names are somewhat unimportant. Also, yeah. it's uh, for those who don't know, it is it, it is a Japanese. Um, it's a Japanese movie. Okay, it's set in Japan. Yeah. It's not a Japanese movie, but it is. It, it's actually based on a Japanese book, not a book. It's actual an actual book. Uh, the guy wrote this. And it's like God. What is it? What, what what would it be to write this and then to visualize it and then and then it got turned into a play in Japan. And it actually went to stage first. And then people <laughs> said, Oh, okay, I get it now. And then they said, Yeah, let's turn that into a movie because that's freaking awesome. But uh, anyway, but yeah, so some of the names and the characters are a little hard. So, but like also they just know, I think they know their audience. They also just part of storytelling. It's like, oh yeah, no, this is this guy. You know, this is the elder. This is the boss. You know, this is the boss's son. They really just call him that. <laughs> I mean, he, he, they give him a name, but like they introduce him as, you know, this guy. And uh, it's great. 
But uh, so all, every character who appears on screen who's like a major character or has significant you know impact on the storyline gets yeah. that title card. Yeah. And so it was just really funny that in the like three quarters of the way into the movie, after you've had like all this fight scene and all this drama and stuff going on between all the various characters, <clears throat> suddenly you see this guy grab a bottle of water and all of a sudden the bottle of water gets a title card. Yes. And it's like the water. And then they go through this flashback where they show how this bottle of water has been in almost every single important scene that has happened on this train or part of something. And I just started laughing so freaking hard at that. It's like, oh my God, like that is that is the absolute, you know, pinnacle, like best display of that concept of Chekhov's rifle rifle. And it's it's great. But uh, uh, but yeah, I, I highly recommend you guys go see it. We'll we'll go more into depth later with it. But uh, uh, but that movie was amazing. It was so much uh, fun. Mandal was saying, I was like, so before you guys do the the TV fest, here's my only update on the creator front. Uh, this weekend, I figured a good workflow for drawing between desktop uh, Corel Painter, desktop photos, and fresco, and sometimes Procreate on my iPad. Oh, nice. Uh. Do you, what, 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 what's, what's your, what's your breakthrough? Do you just kind of like figure out what's worked for you or do you actually have a, do you have a hack? Is there a secret? Uh, Ruch who goes, Tom Hanks as the water. <laughs> yeah, no, they really, they really should. <laughs> they should have asked. So by the way, it's by the director of Deadpool. Um, uh, Deadpool 2. Deadpool 2. Deadpool 2. And yeah. if you remember in Deadpool 2, Brad Pitt, did a non talk non speaking cameo <laughs> yes <laughs> as yeah. the vanisher and he's yeah. only in it for like you know 12 frames getting electrocuted yeah. um yeah so that that same director brought Ryan Reynolds in for the exact same thing to give him just exactly. this it's like all he does is it, take the helmet off turn and smile it, at the yeah, camera it is, this should be called like an ensemble cast cuz it does actually have all of these cameos of people that you know or you think you know and it's just like and again, they're just in there for like half a scene or whatever, and it is fun as hell. Uh, yeah, like Lee was saying, uh, the director is uh, name is David Leach. Uh, he was also uh, uh, an un- he's actually one of the uncredited directors of John Wick. He he too started out as a uh, stuntman and yep. then went into doing screenplays and stuff like that. Now, and he actually had actually uh, this award winning stunt team. Well, that's and, actually uh, how he, he met Brad Pitt. Was he was Brad Pitt's stunt double? Exactly, exactly. So, you know, like the other guy was, you know, doing, you know, John, John, you know, uh, uh, stunt work for Keanu Reeves and show, showed him a script. You know, David Leach did stunt kind of the same thing. It's like, hey, I've got this, you know, movie idea in between being bashed in the head. It's like, oh, yeah, this is cool. Uh, but the other person, you know, one of the producers is Anto- Antoine Fuqua, who does, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, that's, that's very, per-, you know, Antoine Fuqua does a lot of these. He did, like, you know, you know, uh, <laughs> he did the first Taken movie. Yeah. <laughs> like that. It's like, okay. <laughs> you know, there, there's, 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 there's definitely, uh, you know, a remake of the Magnificent Seven. He does like a lot of these uh, action movie stuff, and it, it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, one of my very first uh, favorites of him is the Replacement Killers, and it has like a little bit of that same piece pacing, the slow walk. You know the you know the, how the camera pans around and everything. Also, uh, people remember uh, Training Day, uh, huge movie, fantastic movie, uh, one of one of his best work. And uh, you know, if you have to see it, you should definitely go check out Training Day. I've never and, seen it, uh, but I remember the King Kong really, line. Yes. <laughs> um, and you know, so he, he he's this is definitely in his wheelhouse. Uh, it's like so. When I saw his name on it as after the fact, it's like, oh, okay, this is great. And uh, but yeah, uh, what I was saying before, earlier about uh, David, you know, uh, uh, the uh, director. Yes, that whole you know, it, it, it's a tip of the hat to himself for you know his Deadpool work. You know, there's these little hints that you can say it's like, see, remember this? When I remember when I did this in the other movie, that was me. <laughs> Uh, Madalo was uh, updating uh, on, on his on his workflow. Said, well, Fresco and Photoshop are great. I think Fresco is better uh, is a better paint program than uh, Photoshop. And if the Photoshop UI people remangle the Photoshop code to create a painting first program using the same 
Photoshop engines. Uh, so I combine it with the quote unquote power, heavy use of apostrophes here, of Adobe Cloud and the Dropbox, and all three programs can work together pretty well with a few steps in between. Okay, I see you're so you're taking projects that you're working on from one to the other to the other. Okay. Well, that's a, a lot of a guys. Lot of, wow, uh, yeah. a lot of guys do that where they'll have a. Um, uh, they'll actually start something in uh, Corel, like Painter. Yes. So they'll work on, like Ryan Church does this a lot. He'll do most of his production work uh, for like a lot of the Lucasfilm stuff and ILM. He'll do it in Painter and then he'll bring it over and kind of fine tune it in Photoshop. But, gotcha. the, the, but the brunt of the heavy lifting was actually done by, by Painter. Right, right. Yeah, you, yeah, you usually build up. Because yeah, I've heard this many times that uh, Adobe Photoshop uh, is not necessarily the best place to start off a project. Uh, I mean, it, it, it's e even Photoshop knows this. I mean, that's why, I, and I think I've told the story before, we discovered uh, not uh, only recently that I realized, but that, that, that it became obvious that uh, uh, Adobe Photoshop Illustrator, uh, Adobe Illustrator and Adobe Photoshop were actually originally built by two different companies way back when. Uh, and then Adobe bought Illustrator and, you know, folded it inside into its like, family products and stuff. But on some basic level, there is something that doesn't actually, you know, that uh, Adobe Illustrator is speaking, you know, Swiss German and Adobe Photoshop only stand, understands German. And there's, it's just a little off, and it actually was very confounding uh, for many of us uh, over at PlayStation on a couple of projects. But people would turn it work, and it would all go goofy. But we tried it to load it up to uh, other other people that we we're working with. This, yeah, no, it's all corrupted. We don't understand why or what well, else? You know. And then suddenly, and then we would get our department would take it back, resave it. And then ship it back out to them, and it would work, would work again. And I swear to God, Lee, we, I had so many, you know, five-minute projects that I have to charge these people an hour for a time for because that's what our, you know, we, we bill on the hour for some of these projects. Mm -hmm. And it's just like that's all we did is that we we just took it and we we opened it up, we 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 uh, changed the file name by like putting like you know plus one you know just whatever <laughs> version it we versioned it up one and resaved it sent it back to them and it worked just fine and it was just because the our settings were slightly different than everybody else's settings because uh, some graphic designer at some point knew this updated the settings and since that guy we don't even know which guy it was we think it was some one guy but we're not sure even and he left and he never changed the settings, and we've just had those settings all the time. <laughs> yeah, it's like one of the projects we, we, or one of the things we used to do was we always made sure that uh, uh, almost everything I do uh, oh. that I'm doing for outside clients or whatever, I yeah. have my own settings for. Yeah. But as far as, like, color settings and stuff like that, we I almost always use Adobe Default. Yeah, um, yeah. And as much as I would prefer to use other settings, because I know these are being outsourced and I know that somebody else is going to be handling them, Yeah. Uh, I do them... Uh, I'm moving a fan, by the way, so... Yeah, yeah, no, I, I get you. On the other side of the room at the moment. But yeah, so uh, but we would do stuff that but, way. But I, I have to say, you still sound very good to me. I mean, ah, I, 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 I see that you were further away, but you still came in clear. Good. But uh, but yeah, it's, it's just that whole, you know, if you're... When you're dealing with other clients and stuff, you've got people that are kind of, you know, you're also working with a lot of people who are kind of computer stupid. Actually, here's an yeah. example of somebody who's computer stupid. Uh, this was actually done by Brenner Printing. The, notice how the bottom of the page is truncated. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> they they billed us several thousand dollars for that error. Yeah. And we're like, you you didn't notice that? Like, it wasn't in any of the proofs we did, nothing. And so, uh -huh. yeah, we, we stopped using that printer. Yeah. And what's worse is this entire project was insured. All we needed from them was a letter that basically said, you know, it wasn't our fault, which is what they kept demanding is that they kept insisting it wasn't their fault. And it's like, cool, just give me a letter that says it wasn't your fault. And yeah. the insurance company will, will reimburse us for everything. And they're like, no. <laughs> yeah. We're not going to no, do that. that, that, yeah, that, that. 
we'll, we'll, we'll tell you privately and in person, but we're not going to say it over email or, in, in, you know, we're not going to leave a paper trail. Yeah. yeah. So, which, no, you that know, could possibly ruin our reputation. It was their fault. <laughs> so. Yeah, no, exactly. It was their, it was their fault. Um, I need to step away for just a minute. Sure, sure. And I'm just, I'm just going to sit here and draw. Actually, right now I'm trying to put a, and I got, I went to the doctor's today. And so I just took the bandaid off my arm because it was strangling me. <laughs> but, uh. Uh, I was had a, I had a doctor's appointment today, and it was supposed to be a 20-minute drive, and it ended up running late because traffic. So thankfully, they were able to get me in. So a 20-minute drive turned into an hour and a half. So I got up really early this morning, went to the doctor's, sat in traffic, finally got to the doctor's. Uh, then they did a bunch of tests on me, so they're like, "Hey, it's been a while since we've done blood work and all this other thing. So go in the other room, and they're gonna drain you of all your vital, precious bodily fluids." So, need to say, when I got home, I was exhausted, <laughs> and I hadn't had coffee because you can't have coffee for medical tests. So, Although I found out it's uh, my low heart rate is why I can have so much fucking caffeine and not have it affect me. Because <laughs> most people have like a, a heart rate in the 70s and 80s. My resting heart rate today was 41. <laughs> so if I overdose on caffeine, my heart rate goes up to normal. <laughs> uh, cool. Cool. I just, this is a drink I, I use this at Comic Cons when I start running out of uh, steam. So I, I swear by these things when I'm doing conventions. So if anybody out there is an artist aspiring to do conventions, these things are, uh, are gold. In fact, I got a, a lot of people, like a Ben Templesmith says he won't go to conventions anymore without a, a box or two of these in his bag. But, because uh, basically it's an immune booster. Um, with a shitload of vitamins. Uh, so I'll give you an idea, vitamin B12 has 10,000, oh, I'm sorry, 104,167% in your USDA. Uh, vitamin C, 556, and everything else is about 50%. So if you take two of these, you pretty much get your entire USDA allowance of everything except vitamin B. So and vitamin C, both of which are, I believe, water-soluble. So you just pee out what you don't need. But yeah, so that stuff is that stuff is a godsend. And uh, anytime your batteries are running low, it's a great thing to take. So Mandala, did you get much work done at the... Because where did you finally go yesterday? You were talking about going to a coffee shop. How was Lestat's? What is it? Was it air conditioned? In fact, because the one on, like I said, the one on Park, it was air conditioned like years ago. I don't know if it still is or if it broke or you know. I know sometimes they didn't like running it because the power bill would get high. By the way, I'm using this weird scribble kind of flick technique thing that I learned from David Finch. So what he would do is he would scribble and then fling, scribble and then fling. And so you get a thicker line at the end. So it, it mimics a crow quill brush stroke. Nola on fifth and got a small drawing done. Awesome. If you want, post it into the Discord so I can check it out. I'd love to see it. Or text it to me if you don't want to post it in Discord. But I say post it in Discord so you can share your amazing work with everybody. And then Thursday, we got a lot of fun stuff going on. Uh, I'm going to be 
up in LA with uh, the rest of the DCD Collect gang. So, and I believe Sedwards will be there too, if I remember correctly. But uh, it was funny. So uh, we of course brought DC the Breaker in from Buffalo, New York, and uh, he's a big Buffalo Bills fan, and they're going to be playing against the Rams, which is Doug's team, and Doug has season tickets, so. He just invited everybody to say, hey, let's do a big party thing. We're going to have a, a whole bunch of people uh, come out and, and watch the Rams game with us. And we'll make it a big company. You know, it'll be a team building thing. So that was kind of cool. So we're, we're doing team building. And uh, it'll be the Rams versus Buffalo. And I want to see if... Uh, if uh, DC is going to hold to his threat to wear Zubas, I guess it's called, which is some ridiculous blue and red, like tiger stripe pattern uh, pants or something. So, no clue. Breathe. Welcome back, uh, sir. Vidala says, I ended up going to a restaurant bar called Nola on 5th and got a small drawing done. Nice. Yeah, I was encouraging well, him to post his artwork in, uh, uh, yeah, and I uh, was uh, uh, talking to him about uh, posting his art in Discord so we can see there you go. Open. Yeah. And then Car Collector says, saw a picture of a black bear in somebody's pool cooling off. It's so hot out there. Oh, yeah. No, it, it's, it's, it's everything. I think that uh, polar bears are going to fully, you know, become aquatic, you know, because they have to swim so far now. I can kind of see, like, why. This is, this is how the whales went from, you know, developing on land to going back to the sea. It's like, nah, man, this is way too hot. <laughs> we're, we're, we're going to go back to it's, the water. <laughs> it's nicer in the water. We're going to stay here. <laughs> and I think the polar bear will probably do that very soon. Um, yeah, just, uh, you know, hot, hot as hell. Uh, but I was saying, Lee, it's a huge project, and it'll uh, I'll start posting it uh, probably in a few months. Okay, fantastic. Sweet. I'm looking forward to seeing it. I do, too. Um... I have so, uh, well, I was just talking, I wasn't sure if you were listening or not, listening. but we were talking about uh, uh, DCD Collects is doing a big kind of uh, team building thing up at the uh, Rams versus the Bills game Thursday. Oh, that's what it was, that's, that's what I was, that sparked my uh, thought. So, Lee! Where? Um, oh, wait, here I am. Yeah, no, it's... Uh, uh, you, you might be aware that uh, we do we, we now have a, a new uh, uh, stadium here in San Diego. The, the San Diego uh, State Aztecs have a new. Uh, I saw that driving. Yeah, up driving. To, wow, God, yeah. the feedback is weird. Um, uh, I saw that driving up to uh, the doctors today. Yeah. I didn't get to drive um, into it, but. No, no, no. Yeah. Uh, and so they, they, they played a game there. The Aztecs uh, played a game. Uh, and uh, it made the news because, uh, not so much because of the performance on the field, but more off of it, uh, because of the droves of fans who were passing out and having to be taken away on stretchers because it was such a hot day. And apparently, you know, it's like, it's one of those things like, oh, yeah, no, that's a problem. This stadium has no shade. I was wondering about that. Um, <laughs> it uh, looks... The old, old Qualcomm actually had, like, you know, overhang. There was, like, a certain section, like, in the mid-tier that actually overhung the other thing. So there was actually shade there. Or yeah. just the way that the sun was. Also, it's just this big dinosaur. So, but, yeah. It has no shade. And so people... It was, like, 103 degrees on the on the field. And people just literally just, you know, passing out. In the, you know, fans are just passing out in the, in, in the stands. It's a. It's really great when you're like, "Hey, check out our new stadium. What's it called? It's called Heat Stroke Stadium." Yeah, exactly. So they had people like outside, uh, in the parking lot, but not, uh, sitting just in the shady side, just like literally just sitting on the ground, just trying to like get through some heat exhaustion, not developing into heat stroke, because that's what organ failure happens here, folks. That's that's important to know. Uh, and you know, just like really bad sunburn, you know, the, just like you, you, you know. People with like SPF, you know, 50 on, still getting cooked, you know, just, you know, uh, uh, like all, you know, all the worst parts of the Bible. It was, it was just awful. And I love so, that it was, it was like one of the inaugural games or? 
Yes, yeah, and, and, and yeah, I think it was like their first home game or something like that. Oh, that's yeah, brutal. So they had like a, a lot of the San Diego State alumni uh, were there. I, I I got some letter in the in the mail. I was like, I'm not going to that. <laughs> it's like, I'm paying thirty bucks to stay, you know, to watch, uh, watch a sport ball game. <laughs> I'll pay thirty bucks to watch everybody collapse. Because yeah. I'm I'm messed up like that, but you know. <laughs> That's that's kind of the George Carlin idea. It's all like, I'm not going to go to NASCAR to watch 30 assholes turn left for four hours. Yeah. I want to hey, see some I, car crashes. I actually, <laughs> I actually had a conversation with somebody. I use that as as an analogy for kind of like, you know, a career and everything. This person is uh, young. You know, they're, they're smart, they're ambitious, they're young, but they have a certain allow of a, a bit of... Uh, incredulity about upper management and you know the uh, employees that are older than them it's like why is that person get to boss me around i'm I, I know more than they do i'm smarter i i should you know get promoted i love those people job. and while that is probably true it's and so i did i came up with this analogy that's right it's like it's what you know you do a good job you know you you've done a good you, you've done a good job you've been on you know you've been there 18 months that's great but they have had a career of like 15, 20 years. They are at this such a level because, and I use this as, again, in NASCAR. It's like, are you at all familiar with NASCAR? Like, yeah, you go, go around, turn left. It's like, yeah, but more so being a NASCAR driver, not only are you going, you know, you're, you're, you're in your car, you're going at like a 140 miles an hour, but you're also trying not to crash into anybody else that's going at 140 miles an hour. And then you're trying to be perfect. Not only trying to be perfect, you're trying to be perfect for 400 laps <laughs> or whatever it is. You know, it's like you're great. You've shown that you're, you know, you're, you're, you're you know, you're, you're a brilliant person. You know, but can you do that continuously for that many years? Like you've had one time, but you have yet to be tested. And you know. Uh, uh, and, and doing an excellent job under the best of condition, conditions is is a whole world of difference than doing an excellent job under the worst of the conditions. So you have yet to be tested. Yep. You know. So just sit back a little bit. You know. Get some seasoning, and you know, and, and learn 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 from those around you. A little humility goes a long way. Uh, uh, William Shatner has even said this. Maybe not the best sage for you know. For, for his profession, but yes, he has been around a long time, and he has said as much as well. It's and I think we've had some of the conversations. Like yes, there are better actors out there, I am sure, but I know what I'm doing. I'm good at what I do, and I can do it. I, I can do it consistently. Not a lot of people can say that. Mm -hmm. So that 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 is a big part. Of it. Yeah, it's um, I, I have, sometimes have to explain to my kid that it's like is because also. When you're in your 20s especially, like, I remember sitting there thinking, you know, there were times when I was like, yeah, I know everything. You have this, yeah. you, you are you are chemically wired yeah. to think you are awesome. Um, yes. You know, to basically you be have like, to be. yeah. You have it's, to you can get out of your tribe yep. or go to the next horizon or walk across that ice bridge. Yeah, yeah. you got to be that way. And, and a lot of people don't realize that, you know, it's like, and it's not until, you know, it's kind of like I was watching a comedian basically say... It's the whole thing about, it's like, oh, you shouldn't get married. You know, some lady yelled at her and said she shouldn't get married till she's 27 because that's when your brain stops developing. Right, yeah, no, yeah, I know exactly who that is, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. My, my, the funny thing is the rest of that comedian actually had this great joke, which basically it's like, so, you know, only, a, like, this is how this is her proof that God is a man uh -huh. is that <laughs> the, 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 the boobs were done before the brain was. The brain was done before the brain. So you finished all your work on the boobs before you finished the right. brain, and that's brain. why people exactly. are messed up. Because you're like, fully hard it's like, up until the like brain is up. important. And God yes. pointing at the <laughs> boobs, going, but but boobs, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but anyways, I digress. But yeah, the, the whole the whole point of that, of course, was the uh, it was a great joke. But um, the whole point of that was is you know it's it's you are hardwired to fail, yeah. and do it with such magnificent. Staggering amounts of confidence, um, because you you have to mess up repeatedly to learn how to do things right. You have to do things wrong before you know how to do it right. 
and uh, and and trying to explain that to my kid that like, you're gonna mess up. It's gonna be horrible, and you're gonna get depressed. You're gonna get all kinds of fucking anxiety and shit from it. But you have to do it. It's just you know, it's just the way we're wired to function. Um, but yeah, it's you know, and and we're wired to make really bad decisions on purpose. And again, to do it with a staggering amount of self confidence. <laughs> <laughs> fail, fail fast, fail often. Yeah. Like, do that as much as you can, as often as you can, uh, and eventually you will learn. Try and and you will you learn. Are. You will learn more by doing than you will by being told. And yeah. I have another great analogy for that. I remember when I was in third grade, fourth grade, I think it was third. My mom handed me a or she, you know, held up a bobby pin. Uh-huh. And for those who don't know, a bobby pin is basically this this squiggly U shape kind of long pin thing. And my mom literally sticks her finger in between it so it opens up really wide like this and says, I don't ever want to see you do this and stick this in a plug socket. Yeah. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, you just gave me instructions. Yeah. And so the moment she left the room, I, I, took, the, <laughs> I took the bobby pin, stuck my finger in it just like she did to right. open the prongs up, and I stuck it in a plug socket. Uh-huh. And I, I, it threw me about five feet. Like that, holy yeah. crap, that hurt. But you know what? I learned really freaking fast to listen to my mom. That's right. But uh, but yeah, it, it's you know. But prior to that, I had that you know at third grade I had that stupid confidence. You know, I know what I'm doing. Don't tell me not to stick metal things in the plug socket. Uh-huh. It's like give me a fork and a toaster. Let me show you what I can do here. You know. Right. It's yeah. It's it's just not. Uh, yeah, we're we're wired well, to be stupid. Back, you know, not to give too much, but there is that scene in Bullet Train where the old guy says, you know, the the elder says, it's like to the other character, it's like, you know, you should have more respect for your for your elders. If nothing else, they've had the wisdom to live longer than you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, but I was saying, yeah, Lee's a huge project. Uh, so of course, might, right. Uh, Morty all says, that reminds me, need to check on Jimmy. You should see this guy. Started uh, starting with sim racing and now is like the winning uh, team for Praga races. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I had uh, some experience working on uh, Sony PlayStation's racing game. You know, actually, uh, we did like a photo shoot with some actual racers. Uh, pro uh, Formula One uh, racing guys and uh, who helped develop this game and uh, it, it, it's just amazing you know what they do and you know it was all to for the promotion of like how accurate uh, uh, this game is um, and you can get like a virtual if, if, if you if basically if you play the game and you know with the uh, uh, online com- competitive system that it has and if you basically reach like the grandmaster level, uh, that earns you the opportunity to actually train uh, and get a professional uh, race car driver's license, kind of a thing. That, that's that's part of the deal. And it's like, oh, that's that's kind of cool. They but, should put that yeah. in a rocket racer. It's like you are now licensed to stick a booster on the back of your <laughs> dune buggy. <laughs> what is her name? Uh, 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 I used to know this so well. Uh, just, just give me a second. Uh, and... Danica Patrick. Yeah, thank you. That was what ah. I was thinking. Danica Patrick has said that on talk shows. It's like, yeah, no, I'm a professional race car driver. I should have not my driver's license of that. So I should be allowed to drive faster than people. Other people. I, <laughs> this is my job. <laughs> but by the way, that's a, that's another thing we yeah, had to teach our kid. No, but... <laughs> well, that was that was something else we had to teach our kid is you know trying to teach him how to drive and stuff. It's like you know, yeah. is uh. Just because you know how to use your car, yes, does not mean you're a good driver. Because right. a good driver will also anticipate the other people not knowing how to use their car. Right. You know, yeah. the idiot who's you know, it's like you can sit there and rocket through the lanes and do all the stuff you want, 
but you're eventually going to run into somebody who changes lanes without using a blinker. You're going right. to run into somebody who gets angry because you just passed them for no particular reason. You know, so and you yourself are going to get rage. You know, you're going to you're you're going to you know you're going to tilt. You're going to get rage. Oh yeah, you're you're going to road well, rage because you think you're awesome and you're doing great, and then somebody yeah. suddenly cuts you off. Yeah. You're, you're going to be bad because there's traffic. You're going to be mad because other people are slower than you. You're going to be mad because other people are, are passing you. You're, there's a lot of things that are going to make you mad. You know, other people, like I, I, I work with a lot of long, long haul truck drivers and stuff. And it says, yeah, you just got to put all that away and just realize that uh, basically, you know, whatever you're carrying <laughs> behind you is equivalent to three tons of jet fuel. Uh, it could be it could be peaches. It could be elephants. But just treat it like three, uh, three tons of jet fuel behind you. And just, just, just put all that. Be, be very zen because you cannot afford to have road rage. <laughs> what you've got if you're hauling three tons of jet fuel? Um, I was thinking you said it's like I worked with a lot of long haul truckers. First thing they went through my head was God of War test group. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, but Don was saying, Lee, I hope to have it uh, in showable form in time for LBX and nice. even more so for. A, 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 a lexicon, a lexicon. Uh, and the mandala says, I take my uh, Kruger dunning pills all day, every day. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, oh, he says, Lee, I bought my LBX tickets already. Oh, awesome. Good. Uh, do you want to do you want to split the hotel with me? You're Thanks. welcome to join me. Uh, Alex Vixen checks in. Hi, Lee and Denison's of Phantom Zone. Hello. I'm in terrible pain. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> Ruse who says you're going to run into someone with an expensive car that is also a reckless driver. That that is true. Uh, Madonna says hello, Alex. Listen, how has your warden ward, ward, wardening of the nether realm been? <laughs> uh, Ruse says show up all those Russian dash cam videos. Oh yeah, Russian dash cam videos uh, are, are 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 horrible and amazing all at the same time. My favorite though is uh, when there was that big when that uh, meteorite hit. Yes, Russia, your shower. <laughs> and people were just all like, "Why is there so much amazing footage of you yeah. know in Russia?" And it's like because it's a thing in Russia for people to fraud, you know, the insurance company. <laughs> so everybody has dash cams. So they have fantastic, yeah. you know, HD footage uh, from people's dash cams, e even cars that were just parked, um, yeah. of of this, you know, you know, Tunduska two coming in. <laughs> yeah, no, because that meteor apparently was big enough and bright enough that, like, a lot of these dash cams are activated by motion. Mm -hmm. And so it's not the cam software parked cars. <laughs> well, the, the one I thought was really funny, though, was uh, they were showing, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson was showing footage of this asteroid, you know, or meteor hitting Earth. Uh, uh, but he was showing it at a conference, and he stops the video in the middle because you can hear the guy talking. And he's speaking in Russian, and he's just all like, I just want to point out that that guy is very calm. <laughs> like, I know what that is coming right at me. I'm running for cover. I'm panicking. I'm screaming for everybody. Run for your lives. And this dude's just all like, I wonder if I should get a pizza today. Yeah, no. It also shows the resolve of the Russians. Yeah. It's like the Russians are <laughs> stoic people. There was a, it's, a, it's a great video. It's on YouTube somewhere is where I saw it. Part of a longer um, video, though, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, exactly. No, no, no. Um, but yeah, and, and, and that was also just, you know, just a little, 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 we always, we always like to talk, uh, throw a little something out there for like uh, uh, work and management. But uh, I, I, and the other, you know, the other tip, you know, I had was like, yes, you're fantastic. You're, you're a great employee. You got a lot of ambition. You're very smart. But one of the things you got to, you got to calm down because. You know, they were having a lot of frustration with the teams that they're working with. It's like, all these people are idiots. They don't get what I'm saying. It's like, yes, you're going to get, you're, yeah, no, that's going to happen a lot. And, you know, you have to realize that if you are one of those people that is working, you know, you're giving 100% all the time, every day, not everybody is like you. You know, that's also a big part of being a manager and managing a team and being just even part of a team is realizing that everybody around you is probably not giving 100%. Mm -hmm. They, you know, they might be going through shit. They might hate their job. They might have, you know, stuff going on at home. You know, they might not be completely as focused and determined as you are. You know, everybody's got their baggage, you know, but there's the, you, you can't get mad at them for doing that. That's just what it is to be human. So you need to learn how to, you know, hurt the humans. 
and work with, you know, work, work with the hand that you're dealt. Work with the people that you've got on the team. You can try and motivate them as best you can, and I encourage you to do that. But ultimately, some of these people are, are really just working at 50%. They might just be doing this with the intent of getting out and going on to the next job. Uh, you might get people who, you know, are distracted or, you know, just unmotivated or something like that. You can motivate them as best you can, but ultimately you're going to just have to work with what you got, you know, because yep. there is no more. And just, well, why can't everybody work, be work, working at 100%? And it's like, no one can do it all the time. <laughs> it's like, you, you know, you, you, you've had a good run right now. It's like, you're in your 20s. That's great. Everything like that. And, 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 I, and, I, and I told him, it's like, what do you, it's like, you're, and I got, I, I honestly got this movie, The Core. <laughs> it's like, you're, you, you, you right now, you're going to, you're also very dangerous because you haven't failed yet. And until you have a big fail, you're really not going to know what it is to be a manager. You know, you're not going to know what it is to lead. You know, you're just expecting everybody to keep up with you. And, you know, you're looking at everybody else's faults. But until you fail big, it is not, you know, not going to be, a better leader because right now you're just you know uh you're you're kind of being a jerk <laughs> yep and the worst thing is is it'll be hard the, it'll be hard to get those people who are working 100 percent to work with you again if you're being a jerk right yeah you know it's like well who's you know it's like hey we got this new project you want to work on it yeah sure sounds cool who's the manager oh so and so nope worked with him before i'm done yeah yeah exactly but he's excellent yes he is excellent and he knows it that's the problem <laughs> I mean, anecdotally, people said Excuse it was me. very tough working with Einstein because he literally was the smartest person in the room, and he was also <laughs> smart enough to know that he knew it. Yep. Yeah. Um, Richard says, "I want cake." <laughs> this is also good. You know, uh, cake is also a fine motivator. I I got a lot of uh, experience motivating a room full of people during a trial. It's like, look. If we get, you know, if we can kind of come to some consensus and everybody participates, you know, I will, you know, bring in some uh, 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 Krispy Kreme donuts on Thursday. It's like, I will bring in a cake <laughs> with a stripper in it if you all do your jobs. That's right. <laughs> and Ruby 2 says, the body breaks down, SBA. It does break down. Well, I don't, I don't know necessarily the body breaks down, but it's like your motivation changes. I mean, I saw this very... Like uh, on the front lines of this, when uh, I was working in comic books, it's like we ha we mostly worked with predominantly a bunch of twenty somethings, and they would stay all night, every night. One because they had nowhere to go, and you know they we, they would play video games all night. They would work all day. They put out some fantastic artwork, uh, and just really passionate, motivated people. But after a while. They started getting girlfriends or boyfriends, or they started getting married, or they started like, I would actually like to go on a vacation. Or, you know, they start wanting things. They want to do things and they want to enrich their lives. And this goes to like what Lee was saying about you know, 20 something great and that just plan of your life or anything. And these are good things. You know, the, this is something that you want to do. This is self development, this is character development, everything. But yes, the work suffered. You know, they're, they, they no longer can, you know, uh, put out what uh, uh, output a, a finished page a day. They can no longer do I mean, you know because they their their mind is not as focused on it. They've got other things to do. Um, they've got you know they, even like you know I've got a pet you know to get home to. I you know before they didn't have a pet you know it's like well now they have a pet that they want to take care of that they care about very much you know and you know they want to play with their dog their cat their mongoose whatever they have you know or it's like i have a girlfriend and you know we got invited to a barbecue it's like, oh okay you know it's like so i couldn't get those pages done it's like okay i get it you know and so yeah you know before you know as much as we hate it you know it, it's like you know it, it's like uh, uh, it, ha having a single 20 something is an, it, it, is an incredible resource <laughs> you know they, they put out a lot of work you know and uh, if you, you know, you got them motivated and, and pointed in the right direction, they're amazing. But it's not going to last for very long because eventually, yeah, you, you are going to develop, you're going to want things, you're going to do things, you're going to have responsibilities. And if you are uh, in that kind what? of position where, you know, you're, 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 you you suddenly want to see the world and, and do stuff and, you know, take your family on a vacation or whatever, there, there is a great solution to how to make this work. And, uh, it's it's the Jim Lee project. It's basically sell your company for millions of dollars and then go to Italy for a year so you can learn Italian while drawing. 
Right, exactly. So, if, 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 you, if you can do it, if you can spend your 20s, uh, you know, building yourself up and, and, and uh, nurturing a, a million dollar company, yes. Uh, the, the, if, uh, not, not all of us have, have done that. So <laughs> I, I yes, highly I recommend do, you do it. It seemed to work for him. Yeah, no, it, it's 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 a it's a it's a one two three step process to success. I agree, uh, but uh, <laughs> the, 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 it, it's it's easier. It's harder than it sounds. Uh, Madonna says, "Lee, yeah, let's do houses, awesome the hotel, and let's see if we can get artists to go and uh, to go to uh, to go and expensive dinner with us." Okay, sweet. And I rented a car so we can yeah. drive up there in style. As, as much style as a hybrid will allow. I can see Mandala and the on the road in a very Thelma and Louise kind of way, road trip. Oh, yeah. We're going to have like a shirtless Brad Pitt with us and everything. It'll be <laughs> awesome. Uh, I guess, you know, it could be better than like BJ and the Bear. <laughs> or, you know, Spooky and the Bandit. <laughs> oh, that's actually, that's what I was you. So. Lee, wait, I'm just talking to Lee. No, everybody just, shh, fine. Lee, <laughs> that, that, that director, David Leach, yeah. who did this, you know, this, this wonderful movie and all those other action movies, and again, was a stunt man before, and was a stunt coordinator, and has his own stunt team. Guess, guess what his next project he did to do? Uh, no clue. The Fall Guy. Okay, having a stunt man direct a Fall Guy yeah. movie is going to be freaking amazing. It had better be a comedy, because I remember I remember a, a movie. It was funny, but I thought it could have been funnier. It was a movie called Hooper. Hooper is good too. I saw it when yeah. I was a little kid, but it was like a, uh, 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 the Bandit. It dude with the name. Yeah. Smoking uh, the Bandit. Dude, smoking the Bandit. Like, what was what was Bandit's the actor's oh, name? Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, Burt Reynolds. Burt Reynolds, yeah. I just remember the mustache. But yeah, so, yeah. but he plays like a Hollywood stuntman. And just, I don't even remember the yes. plot of the thing, but I remember giggling at a bunch of the jokes. Man, but because he's a Hollywood stuntman, and, you know, he does, he, he does, you know, like, it's like, go and listen to it, folks. I'll, I'll post it later. But the Ballad of the Unknown Stuntman. And mm -hmm. He talks about all of these things that he does. You know, he puts his life on the line. He's the one who. You know, is in all the action shots, but he never gets the girl. And you know, if anything, he's beaten up and he's hurt. You know, and he's like the I am the unknown stunt man. You know, uh, and uh, it's it, it, it's great. You know, and so the, the this, this is a TV show starring Lee Majors, the uh, Biotic Man. Uh, it was it was great, but it was like he is he is a stunt man, and Lee Majors also was kind of inspired by the stunt men that work he worked with. You know, to do this show. Um, but also, you know, to make ends meet, because uh, again, a stuntman, you know, you're putting your life on the line for, for, you know, pay per day. And uh, he had a side job as a bounty hunter. You know, of course, that's what you do when you're a stuntman. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, bounty hunter slash detective agency and everything. And so uh, he had this, uh, you know, wild cast of characters, you know, affiliated with him, you know, and so, and he would incorporate you know, some of his stunt work in order, you know, to catch the killer or, or whoever was getting away, or the uh, distraught housewife who actually didn't commit the murder but had jump fail because she did. You know, people thought that she did. But yeah, it's it's uh, it, it, it's, it's it's crazy stuff. And, um, it's like the A team, it's, it's, only less. There, there. He's not an outlaw. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so yeah, there, there, there. He is out there. I guess that he's trying to develop. Uh, it says in September 2020, Leach to sign on to direct and produce stuff man drama, The Fall Guy, for Universal Pictures. Uh, <laughs> uh, with the screenplay starring uh, Ryan Gosling and Emily Blunt. Uh, so we'll see, you know, if it ever if it has fruition or anything. But uh, that would be fun. I would, I, I would totally watch a, 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 a Fall Guy movie. Alex Mixon says, I've seen Hooper too. Yeah. Not bad. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember it being a fun movie. Yeah. You know, I don't remember the plot of it. <laughs> no. But I remember uh -huh. the whole, he can, it's like, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Super Hooper, and he's just flying through uh -huh. the air, like in a bar fight or whatever. But yeah, I just, I remember just some funny stuff in it. Again, I saw it when I was a kid, but. <laughs> Alex Mixon goes, 
Yeah, cool. Redo the stunt. Why? That was perfect. What would a director know about stunts? Like, well, I've done that stunt more times than you've been injured. Do it again. <laughs> <laughs> And that's the problem when you have a uh, director who was a former stuntman. Right, exactly. It's like, oh, I know it can be done. Actually, oh, that was I funny. I, 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 yeah, exactly. That actually, uh, 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 Fire and Ice, it's a, uh animated movie uh, that was uh, <laughs> Ralph Boschke. And that's what makes it great, Fire and Ice, yeah. But it is, uh, it, it's, it's all rotoscope, which means they filmed stuntmen and actors actually doing all these scenes. And... Um, uh, and it was funny because I guess uh, so. Frank Frazetta was a really athletic artist. Like if you look at most artists, you know the really successful ones, most of them are not too athletic. Um, yeah. <laughs> they spend all their time in a chair drawing. Um, but uh, uh, but it was it was kind of interesting that with uh, um, with Frank Frazetta uh, that he you know he basically modeled. He would take pictures of himself, you know, like the original selfie stick. Um, for uh, he would actually set up timers and stuff and get into these heroic poses and stuff. So he worked wow. out so that he could be the the model for the Conan paintings he was doing. Yes, yeah. And so to give you an idea, he was you know fairly ripped. And I think it was funny that in the in the seventies when he's like in his I think he was in his fifties at the time. Um, he's working on this animated movie with Ralph Bashki. Um, uh to do uh it's called fire and ice and there's this whole story on the set when they were filming the stuntmen for the rotoscoping that uh the stuntmen are jumping over this fence and doing this thing and swinging the sword and he's looking at it going it, it looks too stiff you guys look like you're you're holding back you got to really go into it and they're just all like it's not physically possible to yeah. which then the you know and these guys these are stuntmen who are like in their 20s and yeah. to which this you know 50 something year old dude walks over grabs the sword and physically does the stunt exactly how they're supposed to do it, and then walks over, hands them back the sword, and says, "Do it like that." <laughs> it's like don't mess with Frank Frazetta. <laughs> no, exactly. Hmm. Uh, give me one second. I gotta, mute, I gotta mute the mic, mic, mic okay. for one no, second. No. Okay, sorry. I, uh, I, my sinuses were, were getting, my allergies are just fucked up right now. Because um, also it was so hot, my wife and I were sleeping in separate rooms. Right. So, because yeah, yeah, she, she's the sitting there like, I'm going to sleep with the window open because it's you know, 90 degrees out at night and I like yes, it. Yes. And I'm just all like, well, I'm Scandinavian. I don't like it. <laughs> You know, I want it to be 30 degrees out, and I'll be happy. So uh, I was just like, tell you what, just because the weather's there's no there's no midway point with this weather. I'm going right. to be on the side of the house with the air conditioner. You can be on this side of the house and enjoy the room and, you know, have the big king-size bed to yourself. She's five foot one. She gets <laughs> somehow... It's like it's like a somehow <laughs> she has found a way to fill a California king-size bed. Uh -huh. As a five foot one female, <laughs> with, a, with a lot of pillows. <laughs> yeah, it's just uh, or I go. You thrash around. Oh my god, <laughs> I I use one pillow if I use a pillow, and I go to bed, and there's just like thirty pillows on the bed. I'm like, why on the pillows? All you're yeah. gonna do is push them over to my side. <laughs> yeah. So basically, yeah, I get spooned by pillows all night long because they're just she just keeps throwing them on me. Um, you know, wake up in the morning, I'm buried under an avalanche of fluffy feathers. Um, right. but yeah, so I, I was sleeping in the other end of the room, but it was, it was kind of funny cause it was so hot, but my allergy medicine that I take regularly is in the bedroom and I have this ritual where every night when I go to bed, I would take my allergy medicine. And, uh, because the, the weekend was so miserably hot I decided, yeah, fuck it. I'm going to sleep over, you know, on this side of the room, this side, the benefit of having a four bedroom house, um, is you have, you know, several guest rooms. So you can just be like, I'm going to be over there tonight. Um, 
and, and yeah, uh, they're, they're, even if I get in, even when I get in really big trouble, I don't have to sleep on the couch. Uh, <laughs> but um, <clears throat> but I wasn't taking my allergy pills, so my nose is like all <laughs> messed up. Maria has become part cat. Yes, Alex, okay. you know her. And cats, evidently. Uh, I, I I've done that. I've seen I've seen that happen. Uh, uh, the movie with, Cats. Uh, yeah, that's horrifying. No, 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 no. no with my, uh, I had a roommate. Oh, and we had a, and she had this little dog, uh, Ricky Bobby. Ricky Bobby's fucking awesome. And uh, my place has a skylight, like you know, Lee. You know, you you have a skylight in your studio there. And that dog would just track that sunbeam like all day. <laughs> would just like find some place where the sunbeam is. It's like you know, just like it, it's it's it is. It's like being caught in a tractor beam, and he would just like fall asleep right there in the sunbeam. <laughs> and it's Ricky Bob. You want to go go outside? He's kind of like open his eyes and wag his tail, but he wouldn't get up. It's like okay, <laughs> you 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 be you, man. And he, the the sunbeam would like move like just as gets to like the tip of his toe, his nose. He would like. And he would actually walk and like get back. <laughs> it, it was beautiful, and I I could watch him do that like all afternoon. <laughs> every time the weather gets the like weather this, gets uh, got uh, feedback again. Um, I, every time the weather gets like this, I uh, I remember my friend Pat who has uh, he has spina bifida, so yeah. he can't feel his legs. You know. Um, uh, he's not entirely wheelchair bound, but you know he would use a cane and whatnot. But I remember him; he was actually at the beach, over by Wildstorm once, and um, everybody else, as they're walking across the beach sand, is doing the whole hot, 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 and he's just mosley strolling, and he didn't realize it, but he cooked his feet, yeah, because he can't feel them. So uh, uh, and yeah, so he ended up in the hospital. <laughs> Because he literally had cooked his feet. And it was just like, oh my god, Pat. So every time he gets hot like this, I just remember that. And I'm just like, I should call Pat, see how he's doing. Making sure he's staying off the goddamn beach. <laughs> uh. So with, uh, uh, with Bullet Train, though, I did discover that a lot of the, the, the banter and the dialogue between them especially the stuff that the, the I forgot the actor's name the black dude uh, yeah. Lemon uh, the yeah. stuff he was saying a lot of that was improvised yeah I, I heard that too uh, is that uh, and I think that that's also just kind of like part of David's uh, the director David Leach's style uh -huh. uh, I, I heard similarly uh, that was also on Deadpool like there are lines you know but like the, the actors are are encouraged to kind of like rip off of it or yeah they do know. what's in the script and then they're like and just go and okay. so most of the conversations okay. between we'll lemon and lines, tangerine you know it's like they will do it as written you know and then it's like okay and then like you know he he has a lot of confidence in the expertise of the actors i guess he, you know he's a stunt man he's done his own share of acting but these are you know legit actors they're they're worthy you know, it's like, well, how do you guys think you should do it? You know, and like these, you know, the, the guy who plays Lemon is a comedian. I love seeing him uh, on all of those like Netflix specials, like the, you know, the end of the world, twenty twenty, or end of the world, twenty twenty one. Yep. He plays this doctor where he's just, you know, confounded why people won't get their uh, their, their vaccination shots. It's going to really save your life, and you're just doing it. You know? <laughs> you know, so there's some like comedic timing. Mm -hmm. You know, and that the, that stuff that he has with uh, uh, with his partner and it, it, is just, is 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 fantastic dialogue. You know, and just some of the stuff that they uh, go back and forth. With. And you know, even even Brad Pitt's character and, and stuff is just uh, it, it is wonderful. Um, I'm not gonna give away, you know, because I, I encourage people if you haven't seen it, hurry and go see it. It's it's actually been out a month. I remember hearing about it. It's like nah. And I was one of those people, Lee knows this for a fact. If I don't see it like opening weekend, I probably won't see that movie. I'll just like lose no mess. I was like, nah, I'll wait. At this point, I'll wait. It's like, yes, but you know, the Ten Commandments, part two. It's like, yeah, no, nah, I'm not going to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Ten Commandments, part two. Now we're up to 20. <laughs> um, but yeah, well, I just, I thought it was funny because uh, they were actually. Uh, 
it's like somebody was interviewing them in one of the the press junket things and was asking it's like you know what was your what was your favorite improv line and and you know lemon was like i don't remember and then ladybug brad pitt's character was was like oh that he basically he's like when you said i look like every homeless white guy you've ever seen <laughs> and he's like yeah, oh no, yeah that came from the heart that, he's like that, that really was that, that is, that really brad pitt the sitting there like you said that with such a deadpan face i'm trying so yeah. hard not to laugh <laughs> it's right, like right. you don't recognize um, me you look like every homeless white guy i've ever seen <laughs> I, I, again just I, I forgot to mention this earlier but just to give you a little bit more you know credentials for david leach he also directed uh, in addition to Deadpool too, he also directed uh, Atomic Blonde. Oh, you know, good. So, that was a good one. Uh, and then also, you know, uh, co-director John Wick. I mentioned that first, but yeah, Atomic Blonde. It, this has, if you look, if you look at, if you watch Deadpool, oh, what you know, watch Deadpool. If you watch Bullet Train and you watch Atomic Blonde, you can really see some of that same pacing mm -hmm. and some of the like the comedic beats. Atomic Blonde is action show with comedic, you know, with with some comedy thrown into it, just the. You know, change it up. A this little is bit. a comedy um, with some action in it. Uh, Bullet Train is 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 category. They describe it as action comedy, and it's like, yeah, <laughs> I guess it, because Brad Pitt's character is this kind of like fish out of water. You know, he he does this you know very very often. You know, hyperspectrum. Um, he's Thank you very like much. a normal guy in extraordinary situation. Like when even in like Mr. and Mrs. Smith, you know, he just it's like oh, he doesn't come across as a world class assassin. He just kind of like and you know. And he isn't. He's just he's actually a guy going through some marital relationship problems with his wife, you know, the magic's kinda of gone out of the out of out of his out of the relationship. You know, his career is okay, but he's got starting to lose focus on it. You know, his friends and his family are kind of like worried about him. You know, and all this stuff happens. But basically it's a love story. <laughs> and I don't know what like oh. I don't know what kind of voodoo magic, like you know, orphan blood that uh, Sandra Bullock is moisturizing with, but damn. I wasn't gonna mention her. I wasn't gonna mention her, but go ahead, since you did. Just She's in the that. trailers. She, yeah. But yeah, it's yeah. like that. That that woman is like in her sixties, I think. Yeah. No, she she looks she looks. And fine. I kind of look at it, it's like holy crap. Yeah, <laughs> She's honestly, looking really good. Is probably the best. The divorce is probably the best thing for her in her career, honestly. I hate, I hate to say it, but she's... Because I, I commented on, uh, with, with Maria, I, compliment, I commented, because she was looking at the Bullet Train movie poster. Yeah. And I commented that, uh, you know, basically it's, I can see all the Photoshop work done on Brad they, they Pitt's face. They kind of smoothed her out a little bit, but Well, still, no, no, not, yeah. no not, not, not her, but Brad Pitt on the movie poster. Oh, yeah. Brad Pitt on the movie poster looks like 10 years younger than Brad Pitt in the movie. Right. Yeah. Um, so they they like really kind of you know took out all a lot of the age lines and the finer you know the 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 finer kind of like you know uh, crow's feet and stuff like that that appear in your face as you get older. And so it was kind of interesting watching that. And it's uh, but uh, but yeah, I, I whatever you know regiment Sandra Bullock has, yeah, keep going. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. Share it with the rest of the yeah, world. She doesn't. She doesn't look half bad. No. Nah, hey, hey. Hey, Brendan. Brendan, we're being joined from our very favorite nerd, nerd of many faces. Brendan is joining us here today. Thank you very much for joining us, Brendan. What's up, everybody? Hello, sir. How are you? Glad to, I'm glad you could drift, drift past this particular sector of the Phantom Zone. I, I missed you. I, I missed you guys, too. It's, uh, I have been, well, last week I was on vacation. Uh-huh. Uh, so we, and uh, we're basically getting ready to have like two of our upper management be gone oh wow so it's a whole entire